uh, I am doing the last time. Um, and last time, uh, following the fight with a Anis Hag and Ogres, um, you had a nice discussion with the Seder Crone, uh, later revealing her name to be Prele, who told you the story of Dahlia, written and narrated by Brian, which was wonderful, and I appreciate that. You're um, welcome. And it told that she wasn't always bad, but then through a sort of a victim of circumstance and other such things, she has apparently uh, went crazy due to grief or some such. And then it was determined that Perle and Zamir were wanting to go north and you guys wanted to leave the Feywild because annoying and so all so of you, you because so all of you use the stone, including those two satyrs and little Jack, and travel to the material plane in Fumok, where young Jack was introduced to donuts and it was adorable. Um, <laughs> and you began your trek north, having realized that the city that uh, the two satyrs wanted to go to was. In relation to Yuki Egi, though on the Feywild, and that your stone could be used multiple times, it just had to recharge. So you began your trek north, um, and everything was peaceful, and everything was fine, until you were attacked by pest pipers, annoying little fey boogers. Um, and after being charmed by them via a song, Locke was hit with a water whip monk ability via Zamir to wake him up and it was dealt way too much damage and then the uh, the pest piper also hit him putting Locke at a wonderful 29 hit points currently um you dispatch the pest so the, pipers so then I incinerated it <laughs> yes yes you did um you, you <laughs> dispatch you, you dispatch the pest pipers and uh, we begin this session in the sort of aftermath of that fight. Um, so, Cad, you would be coming down from Rage, and you would see the remains of a carcass of a pest piper and a fire tree over here. And if I recall correctly, I think the other pest piper was just defeated in his corpse right here in the center of everybody. Um, still, you know, the early parts of the evening, because it happened towards the beginning of watches. Um, what are you people wanting to do? Who was it that hit me with a water whip? That would be your lovely satyr monk right there. Yeah, you already yelled at him saying, what the fuck? All right. What I'm going to have Locke do is Locke is going to march up to him, poke him in a peck, and say, Ow! And then walk back into the hut. <laughs> <laughs> and just leave it at that. <laughs> He's just too tired for this shit. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, and Zamir is sort of coming down from the adrenaline rush and the very uh, quick waking up and being tired himself. So he's just, huh? Uh, right. Yeah, sorry, and you're already inside the hut before you can get that out. <laughs> yeah. Silver kind of claps the satyr on the claps the satyr on the arm and be like, "See what you can get done with less alcohol." <laughs> you can piss off the group's teenager. <laughs> Zamir sort of like he 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 does that nervous thing of putting his hand behind his head, and which for him is behind a horn, and he's like. I think I would prefer being drunk. I might not have hit the kid. Well, at least you got him out of the charm effect. Anyway, we should get some sleep. Yes. Ow. We should do that. So, um, you guys make your way into uh, Frilet's tiny hut again to get some rest and sleep. Um, following the events with the Pest Pipers, you, you get some rest 
after the fight with the Pest Pipers. The night itself is peaceful following that. Um, I'm not going to bother have you guys roll perceptions for the rest of your watch because it's peaceful. It seems a lot of the actual animals that were around sort of wandered away as soon as the Pest Pipers started doing crazy shenanigans. Um, But, uh, yeah. Fucking better. Night is peaceful. Um, and following that, you have... Uh, you awake the next morning and ready to continue your trek to Yuki Yagi. So, as long as no one has anything they wish to discuss uh, with each other as you make your way north, you guys will continue on and make it up to Yuki Yagi. Because once you once you made it to the road following your next day, it it's pretty peaceful. Um, there's 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 a few trades traders going back and forth, and other such things that you've grown used to, and it's essentially the spike in civilization that keeps the wildlife away. Um, and you make your way up to Yukiyagi. Hooray! We did it! We did it! We did it! Hooray! Yes, that. Okay. Um, Dora. Did so. Dora brought a brought a combat knife to school. Um. Yay! That's not even a joke. <laughs> uh, what's with big red up there? There's a building up there that wasn't there when you guys weren't were here last time. Uh, um, what type of building? Um, so... Oh! It's um, that big red thing in the corner! No, I see that. Like, describe it to us, because that's just a red box. I imagine it looks... Right, like I, I know. I'll get to that in a minute, oh, but I realized, there was, I realized there was something that I forgot to have rolled by a cat, by an elephant man, because he was muted and I didn't think about it. Um... Uh... Cadrell, I want you to roll for me a perception check with advantage. Uh-oh. Okay, um, so as you are making your way up into Yukiyagi, um, you, it, it's extremely faint and almost gone, but there is a very soft, faint smell of, like, a smell that you've smelled quite a bit as of late, previously. Uh, death and rot. Oh, no. <laughs> and you, having smelled that, um, you can make for me a uh, wisdom or insight roll. You, I think you have higher insight than you do wisdom. It's not necessarily a person-based thing, but it's similar to what you have used with insight before in your own game, so I'm giving that to you. Uh, you said uh, straight insight? Yep, just insight. 20. 20. Nice. Um, so, following that, uh, your your intuition kicks in, and you realize the kind of location that this is in, and you realize, oh yeah, this was the place that you dumped out the uh, box of coding and all the dead body parts. <laughs> oh. Um, you see, for a minute oh. I thought it was a massacre. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's you don't. No one else comes to this conclusion because it's your keen senses that still pick up on the ever so faint presence of the smell. But as far as like how the area of that area that that particular location looks, it looks completely clean and fine. Um, someone. And someone you said else, this is the building at the northeast, or no, no, no. It was on your way when you were going into Yuki Yagi. I just forgot to mention it before I put you on this map. Ah. Uh. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, you, you pick up on that. No one else does, of course. Um, you can play with that what you will. But uh, this is, of course, you know, while you guys were gone in that uh, set of couple months that you guys were gone, someone was tasked with the lovely job of cleaning that mess up. Because we just left it there for the buzzards. <laughs> and, 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 and they succeeded, mostly. 
Um, so, yeah. Good, good, good janitor. Do your damn job. <laughs> now just imagine being the low-level party members that were told to do that, too. <laughs> yeah, there's a pile of dead limbs on the road. You guys mind sweeping that off so our horses don't get scared in transit when we're trying to make merchant runs? Thanks. Yeah. Um, pay, now, pay like a gold for this each. <laughs> now, as far as the building that is up in the corner in the north up there, um, this is a similar sort of situation, but I'm not going to require a roll for it in any way because this was a event where most of the characters were present, so it's not as uh, important to recollect in such a fashion. But remember when you guys fortified Yukiyagi? Um, For, against like the yeah. fire and shit. Um, against. No, 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 no. It's not fog. Um, I know. And uh, you guys fortified Yukiyagi against both the fire and from Noro's potential undead attack, which didn't actually yeah. happen in the way that you intended. Um, but a lot of the forest was burned down when the uh, lovely halfling. Draconic Halfling uh, did his thing. Um, and it seems as though someone, um, you're not quite sure who, someone has took the remains of some of that lumber and has fashioned themselves effectively a log cabin. Huh. Neat. And it is located in the far north uh, east side of town. Um, granted, from you guys' current location, your players can't, your characters can't actually see it, but it's up there. Okay. Um, yep. Where is people's wanting to go? I am beelining for my house or the library where I, that doubles as my house. Yep, that's this one up here. I guess we'll follow. Because that's like our headquarters now. I feel, I honestly feel kind of surprised and a little happy and simultaneously kind of sheepish that my character's family is one of providing the group with their hideout their headquarters. Well, not really. I mean, we go and just hang out and then we go to the tavern. It, it, I, I get that, but like, my it is. house is where we spend a lot of our time. Because <laughs> there's is. books and stuff to do research. Locke went to his house. Uh, Yong and Zamir, along with, uh, Throne, who I don't have a token for, they are going to go into the, uh, tavern. Jack, who I also don't have a token for, is going to follow Locke. Of course, because I bonded with the kid over donuts. <laughs> and what about Cad and, uh, Silver? Silver, you said you were following Locke? Yeah. Okay. Where's Cad going? Mm, I guess uh, following them. Okay. Okay. Everyone goes to Locke's house. Yay! You see? <laughs> well, right. most mostly everyone. Everyone but the monks. <laughs> the monks stay behind to do monk shit. Well, the monks stay behind to get drunk because they can do that at a tavern. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. All right. All right. So, um, Locke, Locke, you enter your mother's house, um, or the uh, library, and two things. One, um, do do you knock or do you just walk in? I knock and then walk in. Okay. Fair enough. While the while declaring, I'm back. Right. Okay, so you knock, declare that, walk in, um, and your mother, who is sort of dealing with um, one of the higher shelves on a ladder, uh, she immediately sets the book she was messing with on top, on the side of that shelf, you know, sort of horizontally. She's not setting them properly in the shelf. She jumps off the ladder and comes running to you, very happy to see you. <laughs> hugs, hugs happen right now. Indeed. You were gone for much longer than we anticipated, but I'm glad to see you're safe. Yeah, that was my bad. I may have uh, had a slight miscalculation about how long we were going to be there. 
that's my bad. Uh, if it's any consolation, I like lean back and give her like a crooked awkward grin. It's only been like a few days for me. Right. The the Feywild tends to. Uh... It's fucked up. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Or so I've heard. And, it um, is. I've been there. I can assure you. It is screwy. And, and she starts to say something else, and then she sees little Jack, and she's, well then, brought another friend with you. Yeah, we, I, we, have, we have brought some people with us. They needed help. I, uh, do, do you have any donuts just lying around? Uh, not particularly, but I know that the... Uh, there are probably some in the tavern. I turn to Oak. Oak, you have a mission. <laughs> that is an actual laugh from Oak. He's like, I got it. Come on, Jack. <laughs> and, uh... Jack Take the little will... one to get donuts, as I promised he would receive. <laughs> Indeed. <sighs> so how have things um, been here? It's been like three months in this plane, so I imagine like, shit's happened? Um, uh, several things have happened as of late, um, but nothing, nothing horrible or terrifying. It's actually been fairly peaceful here. Um, it seems this, whoever this was that was potentially going to attack never actually did, beyond the moment that, uh, do we say he was some sort of a Goliath person? Yeah, I remember. <laughs> um, Comfortable shutter. Well, I'm glad to see you've returned home. That's that's the important thing. Um, she sort of gestures to the library, and she's unfortunately you will notice that uh, your father is currently not here. Which, Where did he go? Looking around, he's not. Um, he has assured me that he is not going to be gone for long, but he had to travel with someone, spend time with them, assuming uh, apparently they, we weren't the only ones he left behind. Mm. And, um, I have kept in touch with him, uh, via a, another cleric similar to your... Friend Oak, though not a Furbolg. Um, and I've also made use of the scrying spell several times to make sure that he's not going going off not going off somewhere without saying anything. <sighs> Good to know you're on top of that. Sh- yes. From the things that he's done as uh, he- things he done, I kind of feel like I have to. I'd honestly be disappointed if he didn't. But, aside from that, um, he should be returning within the next couple days, based on what the clerics have said. Um, And, well, it seems that uh, you and your friends are not the only adventuring party that has made their home here in Yukiyagi, either. Um, I don't know if you saw it, but there is a log cabin that has been fashioned up to the north slightly um, using the uh, leftovers from the barricades and other such things in the forest to sort of build it up. Um, they don't always stay in town. They, they do travel out and adventure much like you do. Um, but they've sort of made a base of operations for themselves up north. Huh. Interesting. Aside from that, though... It's, uh, fairly peaceful. Um, (laughs) the tavern gets a little bit more business and a little bit more lively, considering that one of the uh, party members for that group is a bard. A very good one, too. A party member? Um, one of the uh, party members for that adventuring group does happen to be a rather skillful bard. Out of character. Is there... Huh? Is it Wesley? No, it is not Wesley. Fuck! Um, I miss Wesley. You do miss Wesley, but it's fine. Um, also, uh, would you say that hearing... Granted, well, I guess Locke did make Wesley a little bit. 
Yeah, brief encounter. Um, mm -hmm. But Locke did not hear the story that Wesley said in the one shot. He did not, no. Okay. Which I am very saddened by. That's fine. No, the king explained, and then fucked off. <laughs> Kenneth, you're going to have to send me that whole story at some point. Saved. <laughs> it's relatively easy to do. It's saved. Um. Anyway, so yeah, it's it's not Wesley. Um, Wesley doesn't have another adventuring party that he started traveling around with. Um. So, yeah. However, you did see these. Uh, you may or may not have seen these. This particular adventuring party before you left Yukiyagi last time. Right. Um, Those people didn't they have like a sexy cat lady with them? They did. Right. Okay. The part. You don't know anything about them other than that it consisted of uh, a sexy cat lady. A rather tall and tough-looking ASMR, uh, or no, not ASMR, Goliath. Sorry. Um, it I'm was. I'm gonna have PTSD of Goliath one of these days. I'm pretty sure. It, it was a tough-looking Goliath in the party. It was a tough-looking female Goliath, a sexy cat lady, a blinkling that was very, very talkative. And a little gnome girl that had a little fairy flying around her head. So did we notice a building while we were walking over to Locke's um, library home? You may or may not have. But she did mention... Yeah. To, Locke's mother did mention uh, in pointedly that it was to the northeast of town. So whether or not you saw it or not, you know it's there. So what is it? It's a log cabin. Essentially. Okay. Mm hmm So it, it was it it is actually something that was completely like you know clearly built by someone who is used to living in such places and was built out of the remains of the lumber from the the forest fire and from the barricade that you made to protect Yukiyagi. So but anyway, um other than that, it's been fairly peaceful here. Um, every now and then... Who lives uh, there? Hmm? Have you seen who lives there? Yes. Um, the log cabin is for the adventuring party that I mentioned before. It serves as their base of operations whenever they need to uh, take a time to rest for a few days. <laughs> Similar to how you... It's essentially similar to a base of operations that you guys are using the library for. Hmm. Neat. Great. Yes, you have a rival adventuring party. I know what party. River, Riven would say. I mean, I wouldn't call them rivals, just neighbors. We, we already have a job we're doing that has nothing to do with them. It's not until we're competing for work <laughs> that we'll be able to consider each other rivals. So what, is this going to be a town of adventuring parties? Consider, no. I mean, it, I mean, it just has a couple. Anything, I mean, if that prophecy is anything to go by, we're going to wind up saving the world. So, I mean, if that goes through, then we'll have one hell of a reputation. And yeah, that's going to inspire people. And we started here, kind of, so people will be coming here. I would not be surprised if in like a hundred years, Yukiegi has evolved into a big metropolis for starting adventurers, like floor one of Minecraft <laughs> or whatever. Oh, God. <laughs> Well, now that I've uh, gotten caught back up with everyone else, me thinks uh, Locke will kind of a... Uh... All right. Just wanted to check in here. Uh, there's nothing else. I think I'll go regroup with the others at the end so that we can discuss our next move. All right. You be careful. Uh, are you going to be leaving again, then? Potentially. We do have more things we need to hit. Thankfully, nothing in the Feywild, so... So you'll be able to keep better track of how long you're going to be away, then. That's useful. Well, we mm -hmm. probably should stay for a couple of days, because yeah, I don't know how many minutes it's going to last. Mm -hmm. stuff mm -hmm. Once we take the other two back. Yep. So a few days at the very least. 
All right. Good to know. You have a loft. You you have bed available in the loft should you need it. Thanks. And, All righty. And with that, lock all. Turn and head uh, back to uh, in. All righty. Did she say that the adventuring party was out? Um, she said that they're currently in town. Oh, they are in town. Yep. They off they oftentimes will leave, much like you guys will will, but this is their base of operations when they aren't adventuring. And currently they are between jobs as it were. So they are in town. Mm. Okay. To the tavern, I guess. Dad, you going to the tavern? Um, where, where? I'm sorry, where was Lot going? Back to the tavern to regroup with the other. Um, I'm going to uh, meet up with him in a minute. Uh, I'm going to tell him I have something that I wanted to do before I met them there. Fair enough. Okay. Lot, you go to the tavern. Cad, where are you going? Um, once, uh, once they're, uh, out of eyesight, I want, I wanted to go in and actually talk to, uh, Locke's mom. I had a question for her, but I didn't want to ask in front of Locke. That's interesting. Okay. Um, so you remember, uh, Locke had, uh, sat down with me after, uh, what was it? Was it the Red Caps? No, it was it was the big fight after that, uh, where my uh, elephant guardian ancient people, uh, they were all like staring at him. He sat down and he told right. me about that in character, right? Yeah. Yes. So I wanted to ask her if she had any idea. Um, basically, let's see how how would I word this? Uh, would she be familiar with? Uh, the the ancient protector people from when someone's raging like would she have would she know about that as a thing that exists um she would have heard of it yeah um it's hmm. how likely would you say that uh alessandra had ever traveled to caverton ryan would you say she did that some in her youth maybe Prior to, yeah. or does she always stay in Sevenora? Uh, maybe. Like, I imagine she maybe she'd have some colleagues there, and since you know, like she was like one of like the bigger mages in Sevenora, maybe she went to uh, that that city you mentioned that I immediately forgot the name of every so Caberton. often to commune with yeah Caberton to commune with colleagues or whatever something like that maybe. It's reasonable to say that since she was a high-level mage, and one of the ways one becomes a high-powerful mage is to sort of study in other places. The Similar to the concept of studying abroad, though not abroad in the scope of other countries in this sense, um, since Caverton has its strong mage center as well, she probably ventured up to Caverton for a little while to uh, study a little bit. Yeah, probably. So okay. That she may be at least somewhat familiar with the, at least the the concept of what it is or how it works or whatever. Right. Yeah. So in response to your uh, question, she'll be like, "Um, I'm familiar with it. I've I have seen a few of the Loxodon the the hierarchy of Loxodon guards, and I can't say that I have seen them rage, but I've heard stories about them raging. Is, is What's going on? Well, um, I know it's my ancestors that are supposed to be coming forward to protect my allies, but uh, your son sort of scared me a little bit. You know, I, I try and look out for him, and uh, I want to protect him. And he said that when we were in the Feywild that my uh, ancestors were staring him down. And the, I don't think that they've ever done that before. So I was just curious if you had any insight into what that might be. Is it anything mm. like your magics? Not not in that sense, no. Um, 
It, it does seem strange that they would look towards someone, at least especially someone like Locke. I don't know why there would be a connection there. Um, is there anything strange that you know of about your your spirits or anything that's different than your other colleagues that you trained with, perhaps? Not that I'm aware, no. Uh, I was told that they're my ancestors and they spring forward to help. Um, I don't know. I just thought it was a little strange because uh, it was unsettling to him and I, I wanted to see if maybe you had any insight on that. Um, sorry, sorry to waste your time. No, no, it, it's fine. Um. Hmm. I would say then perhaps. Well, do you, or some of the others in your party, do you know what they look like? Do you have a description of them? Perhaps they look a little strange and that might give us some degree of clues. Um, I think that he said that they had shadowy appendages and things that they're not supposed to have when we were in the Feywild, so maybe it was just the fact that we were somewhere different that, that made them different. Hmm. You, you, you keep saying that he saw. What about you? Um... I, I sort of look down. Um, well, when I'm raging, I don't really remember anything that happens, so I'm not sure. <laughs> and is I don't believe that is true for your other Loxodon, your your fellow Loxodons when they rage, um, or is it? I don't, I don't think so, but I don't. I'm not sure. Tell you what. This, this wasn't a waste of time, necessarily. It's good to get that sort of thing off your chest so that you feel more at ease. Um, I I'll see if I can look into it a little bit. See with, if there's any information I might be able to uh, dig up. Uh, wait. She sort of gives you a... a, a, a she sort of gives you a look as if she's trying to stare at you as if she's seen you for the first time. <laughs> okay. I, I wave and introduce myself. Hi, I'm Tadruin. <laughs> <laughs> she, she smiles. No, no. Um, it, it's it's got to be something else. I'm I'm sorry, but... I never really thought about it before, but in thinking of if you are perhaps different than your fellow Loxodon in Caverton, there is a definitive feature that sort of just came to me just talking to you now. Um, your fellow Loxodon's ears are smaller than yours. And your hair color is different than other people. This, I mean, I don't see. <laughs> this is this is true, and that's a fair point. But I, I have before read up on information of other Loxodon tribes that are not a part of this kingdom, and how Loxodon of different areas and of different uh, locations may or may not have different size ears. It's it's a regional thing. It's rather odd that there is a Loxodon with larger ears in a family and clan of Loxodon with smaller ears. That's so you're saying I'm, saying I'm weird. You're just different. But so is Lock. That's fine. Mm. Mm. All right. Well, um, thank you for your time, and if you uh, think of anything else, uh, let me know, okay? I'll see what I can find. You, you keep a good eye on that boy, okay? Uh, I, I bow uh, respectfully, and uh, I say, I'll try my best, man. <laughs> he sort of gives you a reassuring smile, and you go on your way. Yay. 
All right. Um, so. And then I'll uh, catch up in the tavern. Going in the back door, apparently, but that's fine. Um, I don't know how you're... <laughs> um, so, before Cad gets there, he, and during the conversations of uh, when he was talking to Alessandra, you guys make your way into the tavern, um, and Yong and Zamir are already uh, sort of drinking the craziness of the last few days, months, technically. <laughs> um, they're already and, in their cups. Yeah, they're already in their cups fairly well. Um, and you guys see... Oh, damn it, I thought we were doing so well. I mean, they're, <laughs> things are peaceful now, so... <laughs> Still. Um, uh. Also, as you guys make your way inside, um, you see a somewhat familiar female Goliath in the corner. Uh. Um and, and how is and how is Jack taking the donuts? Oh Jack is Jack is loving the donut. And he, he sort of eats I'm trying to get hyper. He, he he sort of eats and nibbles on it and he's hmm. I guess recipes are different in different places. This one tastes slightly different, but I can't decide which one I like better. They're I, all good. I I Locke will sit down at Jack's table like it's a donut. Donuts are delish. And I will join him for donuts. Yes. Yes. That. Oliver is going to go get a couple drinks. Um, and also in the tavern um, is... I still do not have an official token for the uh, Blinkling Bard. Um, so he is still a gemstone thing. But there is the Blinkling Bard and the, n- the smallish uh, gnomish girl who had the fairies spinning around her. Um, that are in sort of the back of the tavern, what is essentially a stage, and it seems that you you guys, when you come in, you come in on the ends of a performance that the uh, Blinkling was having. Um, hmm. and upon you guys coming in and you know getting into the donuts, Young sort of lazily claps. Not bad. Interesting story. Or, not not story. Interesting song, I should say. She seems already sort of lost in her drinks, but other than that, she's enjoying the show. Silver, like, um, adds another drink to her pile. <laughs> it's like, oh, fuck it, we're in it already. Might as well go the full mile. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, and, and, Locke, you enjoy... Uh, Donut or two, um, and mm-hmm. the ending of the performance has officially come, and everything started to settle down, and uh, these two wander off to their uh, fellow party member down here, and that is about when Cat arrives. Thank you. <sighs> I just yeah. let myself in and didn't find a seat. Yep. Yeah. So. <sighs> And then the uh, crone speaks up, uh, Prile, and she's... So... Are we going to venture back into the uh, Feywild and... Uh, soon? Are you wanting to spend some time here? How are we, we going to do, do this? Soon. Just one of us needs to take you, right? Yeah, I'm going to just pop you over there, make sure you arrive fine, and then pop back. Well, we're technically in the town, so... Yeah, I mean, I mean, that's what I mean. Just make sure that town isn't... I mean, when we showed up at your place, we showed up after the Red Caps had already done their thing. And that was my first impression of the Feywild, so... That's stuff, rather stuff reasonable. <laughs> though, um... Though the village up north that will match your town here will... It is much more fortified, so I would assume that they would be safer, but you do have a point. You never know. Well, still, I'll take you guys real quick, and if something bad's going on, we'll just be back here and deal with it later. <laughs> At this point, she kind of, like, is with, like, a couple of, like like, five drinks for herself, <laughs> and then she's like, oh, right, I have to take these people back. 
<laughs> Has she drunk any of them? No, she's just like coming over to sit down. Don't drink and jump. Right. <laughs> so she's like, uh, lock, watch these. Okay, I will watch them. You want a and this couple is, of and, and this is Oak uh, speaking. He's. Do you want anyone to go with you, or do you just want to pop in and pop back? Popping in and out should be fine. So I'll just go in with them real quick. All right. Okay. Um. Out of, so, uh, out of character real quickly, could someone refresh my memory as to the uh, name of that other person that we're supposed to be helping Jack find? Um, Jack's... The other the name of the person that you are supposed to help Jack find is his sister. And her name is... Let me... Uh, and open, because that's the one thing I forgot to open. I knew there was something I forgot to open. Um... Um... He actually has never told you, um... <laughs> um, I hope not. <laughs> it, it, it's for actually for, for context, everyone. Um, uh, Kenneth just put in the roll twenty chat. Uh, this has been Shadows of Gudirio. Join us next time as we venture back into the Feywell to find out why Silver has been gone for three months. <laughs> Which I hope that's not the way things go. All right. Um. So. Jack has actually never has not told you his sister's name. You just know that it's his sister, and you only really got that story from uh, Perle and Zamir. You've never actually spoke to Jack directly about his sister, other than confirming with him that it was uh, the case. Um, All right, then I will ask him. Uh, huh? Oh, uh, Jelay, Jelay, right? It, uh, I'll... it is that. Jilly. Jilly. Okay. Um, I'm I'm not sure where she is. Um, but apparently, based on you know conversations with your mother and things, you have some high powerful magics to. Her, I guess. Indeed. Uh. We could probably try to scry her location, figure out where she's at, although that'd be a bit of a interception of privacy. Um if you have the if you can describe her really, really nicely and effectively, then Oak could probably just uh use that communication spell he has and uh figure out her location by asking so that we can just escort you to her that way. Um Okay. Um Mm. Okay, and so Jack will go and speak to Oak for a little bit as Silver goes off to uh, remedy the situation for the satyrs. <laughs> um, is a situation that does indeed need remedying. Silver, as you are leaving the tavern, make for me a perception check. Uh oh. Never trust it when the dungeon master asks you to make a perception check. Perception check, Silver? I'd say never trust when the GM uh, singles you out to make a check. <laughs> Six. Okay. Um... <laughs> She's just like, okay, let's hurry up. I got that some drinks. I don't want them to go to waste. Um. Yeah, okay. Cad, you and Yong are going to get a perception check. Oak is going to get one at disadvantage because he's talking to Jack. And Locke, you can make one too. Sure. Okay. Eight. Mel would not help Whatever you Whatever they're saying, I can smell it too. <laughs> and... We need our Oak. Yeah, you do. And Oak has disadvantage because he's talking to a little kid. Oh. Fuck. At the same time, he's at the same time this event is going down. Not advantage, disadvantage. I'm roll. Still sixteen. Still the highest of a little group. Yeah. Okay. Um. So. Um. So, Wirt, you make your way outside, and you're getting ready to, um, 
Uh, do your thing then. Continue with that. Okay. Do you just take them to the middle of like the central square of town and just whoosh? We kind of go towards like the front of the town and stuff, and then basically like okay, gather together, and then poof. <laughs> All right. Um. So. So we just like appear right at the front of this town. <laughs> right. Um. So similar to the way that Fumok had a very, very reminiscent layout to uh, the town in the Feywild, it's similar here. Though in this town, um, the houses are primarily made of um, lumber and wood rather than brick. But I'm not going to try to make an identical copy of Yuki Yagi that is made with logs. So, meh. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, Plus, a brick cabin in the northeast, which looks relatively new. No. <laughs> no. Um, but it is, like, more fortified. Yeah, the, the, the town is more heavily fortified. Um, and it has a jungle to the east, reminiscent of the forest that was to the east that burned down in the material plane um and um yeah and if you look around are you going to spend any time at all or are you just gonna bamf in bamf out she's gonna she's gonna walk with them to like get them to a place where they can go like a tavern or or a house that they can go do okay or something um so when you were traveling so she'll probably be with them like at most an hour. Um, so a day. Yeah, Good to know. <laughs> um, so, uh... Well, I don't know. How long would it take just to walk and find a place for them to go and crash at? I mean, the, the, the layout is fairly similar, so it doesn't take you very long at all to find the tavern. Okay, then just be like, okay, is there anything else you guys need? Um... They seem to be fairly comfortable here, and the the crone sort of puts her hand in yours as, as a gesture of thank you. Um, and Silver, you notice very quickly that even with your, you know, Asamir and Draconic heritage and all sorts of other such things, you are the most, in your mind, Normal and non fey esque individual in this whole town. <laughs> awesome. Which makes sense. So everyone is just like staring. A few people are, yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, you can just up here. Th th there's that too. Well, she gets a bit charismatic and like smiling and stuff. Um, but to, to she, put it. She looks at, uh. Uh. Crap. Name. Slipped my mind. Which one, Crone or uh, Zamir? Zamir. She looks at Zamir and be like, "Don't go drinking too much now. I will find out." <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> if you... Make an inti intimidation check. Make a deception or no, check. No, no deception. Will, deception. Do, do a deception <laughs> yeah. check. Twenty-three. Wow. Oh, okay then. Hmm. He's sort of like, um. Well, well he says not too much drinking. Okay. Look. Get an honest job. Have a good life. Look, it's going to be very, very hard for me to do here, just so that you are aware. Um, and. Silver, you notice that the bar bartender and bar owner for this particular tavern in the Feywild version is, in fact, a satyr, too. Um, mm -hmm. And along with that, in and amongst all of the weird, like, Feywild people, um, or Fey types, types wandering around, um, there are, of course, satyrs. There is a pixie or two that are flying around, as if they're just normal people. Um, some even some in the tavern even have their own versions of cups that are much smaller. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> That's adorable. And the a shot is like a gallon for them. Yeah. 
Um, <laughs> and the most striking for you, as far as uh, fey types that are also wandering around in here, is the tavern also has tables that have no chairs because some of the tavern paint some of the tavern patrons are centaurs. Oh. Cool. Um all right. So, um so, you you don't think else? all good. You, you don't think uh uh of any anything more pressing matters. They don't have any more pressing matters. Um and if that's the case, then you can bamf your way back then. Yeah. Uh, whew. I'm gonna say that... middle of the bar and then just go bamf. Okay, in the middle of the tavern? <laughs> yep, just bamf. Okay, good enough. Is anyone currently in that location? Um, we'll find out. That's gonna be several hours later because she was there for probably At some. 30 probably minutes. Probably there for. An hour. Around about an hour, uh, about thirty minutes or so, I would say, and because yeah. of that, you guys came in the morning. She goes into well into the afternoon before she comes back. <laughs> um. Oh, my drinks are are warm. Oh yeah, most definitely. Um. So, following that, I, um, or I guess Yang sits there and somehow deceivingly like steals them away from Locke. What? You're taking what away from me? Actually, I was just saying it. Just like if Yong tries to take them away from you, <laughs> take them Actually, away from you, my donuts. No, no my five drinks that I told you to watch. All oh, right, your five drinks that'll totally be stale in room temperature by the time you get back. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Um. <laughs> so Yong sort of after after Silver's been gone for about an hour or two, she, even less than that, Yong sort of wanders over to Locke and she goes. So she bamfed out after getting the drinks knows that an hour in the Feywild is a day those drinks are gonna go I know she told you to sit there and watch them but if Young. someone doesn't if someone doesn't drink drink Young. them what Young. Lock cast Mage Hand makes the Mage Hand come up make a finger poke her in the nose and slowly push her back away from the drinks <laughs> fine whatever <laughs> Locke just kind of gets a cheeky little grin at a girl and goes back to staring at Silver's drinks. <laughs> well, she'll, try, she'll, she'll try sneaking later. <laughs> Maybe some other patrons will try to steal them. All right. So, Cad, what are you doing? Are you just hanging out? Yeah, probably. All right. So, uh,. Oak stays pretty well quiet as he uh, goes and he sends off the message, sp uh, the sending spell with Jack. Um, and, or, or though, wait, before he does that, he looks to Locke and he goes, Okay, so what's the plan here? Do we want the easiest way to keep, considering we have some other things that we need to take care of, um, the safest thing for Jack would be to. Have him, you know, stay with your mother who could watch over him and send his sister's adventuring party here to pick him up. Or do we want to say we'll meet her somewhere else? Or what's your plan, Locke? Well, you actually raise a good point. My original plan was going to be to figure out her location, ask her to stay put, and then bring Jack to her. But you make a good point. It would actually be better for Jack to hang here because this is a stationary place devoid of you know, the bullshit we deal with on a daily basis. So we, what we could probably do, I mean, you, 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 you have the ability to send her one of your sending spell messages now, right? Yes, of you, course. I mean, yeah. So yeah, it would probably be wise if we just had Jack hang here, notify his sister of his location, and then just let that happen. And uh, if possible, then... If she has the spell, the same one that you do, I mean, she's a cleric as well, isn't she? Um, you don't I know her. Is that smart? Uh, right. The, there was a there was a mention of a cleric, but that was due to the story involving your dad. So, 
Ah, right. Okay, never mind. Uh, well, it, mm. so what will probably wind up happening is we'll just need to check on that every so often, like every few days on the road. You could probably just send a message to my mother and ask, hey, has Jack been picked up yet? And if yes, good. If not, then, well, then just wait some more. And if it takes too long, well, then Houston, we have a problem. Right. What's okay. a Houston? <laughs> Houston is a fictional city. It's in this awesome book I read about a planner travel where you, instead of using portals to jump between dimensions, you just go up really high. Oh. They didn't have magic, so they had to do everything with these really weird and funky big constructs. Like, imagine a Warforged, but like a thousand times more intricate and a lot bigger. Does it have Wi Fi? I don't know <laughs> what that is. Probably. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Um, so uh, uh, that's canon now. <laughs> Jack, Jack sort of gets wide-eyed at, at your ramblings of the story, and then he he sort of shakes his head. Okay, so you need a description of her, and then you can you can send a message to her then, and we'll just wait it out. That's oh, more or less like, the plan. Yep. Yeah. All right. So following that, um. Oak goes off into the corner, and he will converse with Jack to get some details in that regard. I thought and, they already did that. Well, he was getting ready to do that, and he realized he wanted to talk to you first. Um, ah, right. So, following that, as as they're off doing that, uh, the uh, blinkling bird will wander over to Locke. Mm, uh-oh. As you are guarding these drinks that you have there. And uh, he's like, at the ready for diversion and uh, dissuasion if need be. So wait, oh, and Tamir's gone technically. Poof. Yep. Poof. Um, Poofed. Gone. Done so, so. Um. So the blinkling will wander over, and he goes. So, your ASMR friend, she purchased a bunch of drinks. Give them to you. You're not drinking them, I and like now. A person. Well, race is a terminology used to refer to someone in a sense in this world. It's not that you're different than anyone else. It's just you're the only ASMR in this tavern currently. Yes, but I don't. I don't look different at, compared to everyone else. Like another human. Yeah. Now, I'm just say friend. Sorry, I'll try to keep that in mind. Um. <laughs> Your your friend purchased a few drinks, wanders off with those two satyrs? Really? Satyrs? How did you... Anyway. She purchased drinks, leaves them with you, you're not drinking them, and then she wanders off? I'm watching them for her. I don't usually like alcohol. More of a donut person. To capitalize on that, I nibble on a donut. Nice. Donuts are very good. <laughs> donuts are very good. I'd rather be drunk on donuts than alcohol, because one gives you hangovers, the other gives you a sugar rush. And then a sugar crash later. I should know. Anyway. Yeah, but a sugar crash is not a hangover. So. Fair. We have clerics. <laughs> anyway. You're not here, Silver. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Just keep watching. Anyway. Okay. So. She wandered off. And you're watching the drinks. Any idea how long she's going to be gone? She'll probably be back within a few hours, I imagine. Not much longer than that. She totally bought drinks, set them down, and then went and left town. Who does that? Someone who forgot she had to plane jump for a minute. Plane jump? His eyes get, like, wide. Yeah, we've seen some shit. Who among... I know I don't know how someone in your party was capable of plane jumping, but that's very interesting. Eh, it's a long story. One I'm not going to get into right now. Darn, I, I do love a good story. I imagine. <sighs> Imagine how much it'll make people laugh, however, if you tell them about the time this half-elf teenage warlock asked you to keep drinks cold by using a freezing spell on them. 
I pop a cheeky grin. Do you have a thing like that? Uh, me? Some sort of spell to chill drinks? Yeah. Sure. Cool. There's a gold piece in it for you if you do that. I actually gotta double check his spells. Make sure he does have it. <laughs> like, like I'm imagining like chill touch here specifically, or something yeah. akin. And unfortunately, bard spells are not spells that one can uh, just spontaneously choose which ones they know. Um, like a cleric can pray for him and whatever. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately. I do not. Darn. But my friend Malia might. Which one's that? Um. He's like, that would be the gnome. Where did she. And you notice that uh, Malia at this point is just dancing around in a circle on the counter. The heck? She's, she's spinning around in a circle and she has. A uh, satellite of a little fa of a little fairy thing that's spinning around her. Ah, she's the fun one. Sometimes, yeah. Oh yeah, get over here. Hmm? Huh? Oh, and, and she almost like trips sideways, and he's uh sure. And it's immediately apparent that her like trip was a very rare occurrence for this little gnome, because she just full-on somersaults off the counter. Just bring. <laughs> yeah, what's up? Um, chill touch spell, you have that, right? Oh, of course, all the time. And then the blinkling looks over to you, Locke. Right, so... A buddy of mine bought these drinks here. I just wrote them. Wants me to watch them. But it's been a while. It's going to be a while before she gets back. These drinks are going to get cold, or you know, room temperature, before she gets back. There's a gold piece in it for you if you can keep them cold with a spell. But for, you know, until she gets back. Oh. Totally. Uh, where did yep. she go? Yeah, if we... you don't mind me asking. Uh, a place where the sun never sets. Because there's more than one. I get this kind of annoyed look on my face. It was muggy as all hell, hot as all hell, and I don't want to go back there ever again because that dimension hates me. It's all of us, really. <laughs> uh, the, the little gnome girl, Malia, visibly gets a shiver, and she's... <laughs> yeah, me neither. Don't remind me. Gotcha. Boop. Oh, you've been there. Cool. <laughs> I grew up there for seven years. Anyway... Boop. You have my sympathies. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, how old is she? Um, gnomes age in a similar fashion to humans, and she appears to be, uh, roughly in her... She's still young. She's about 24, 25 or so. Oh, wow. And she, she does chill touch on your, uh, thing. Um, question, is chill touch a cantrip? Chill touch is a necromancy or is there, spell. Or is there a cold? Is, is there a cold base spell that would be effective? That is a, uh, is it a cantrip or a first level spell? It is a cantrip. It's a necromancy uh, cantrip. Uh, it lasts for one round. You create a ghostly skeleton hand and hair. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're fine. As long as it's a cantrip. Nice. Oh, damn. I was... Wow. <laughs> Why is that a natural 20? What did you uh, click on there, uh, Cad? Sales. It just does dam necrotic damage. Right, I know. Um, but it is a cantrip. That's the main thing. Right. We're getting creative here and having that cantrip just, like, grab onto a thing and just cool it way down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're fine. So she, she, she grabs it and chills the drink. There you go. Haven't really used that spell for that sort of thing. Never really thought of that. That's pretty cool. I was going to cool. say frostbite would work. <laughs> I pass Frost. her the promised gold piece and say, let me put it to you this way. 
I don't have very many spells at my disposal, comparatively speaking, and I can only cast a few at any given time. I've had get by. I know that pain too. We have a lot in common, apparently. Huh. Have you ever used Mage Hand to pet a dog? <laughs> Not <laughs> she, she she smiles and like th there's this like visible ear to ear grin and she goes <laughs> I used mage hand to pet him one time does that count uh, is he a dog she points to the blinkling that's beside you and he immediately smacks her like shish <laughs> I was like hmm I don't think dogs do that so no it doesn't count Tell you what, find uh, you a nice direwolf pup, use May Chan to pet that, and then it'll count. Pet a direwolf? Like I said to your friend earlier, we have seen some shit. Barely. And a lot of it, and some of it was adorable, a lot of it was traumatizing, and I'm 16. I chow down on another donut. <laughs> <to> emphasize. <laughs> um. Yeah. Hey, uh, Arwen, you want to go back to your performance? You told the, uh, the, the tavern keeper that you would do too, right? Right, got it. And then the, uh, Blinkling will go back to the stage along with his assistant, who is the elm. Alright, cool. That's an interaction yeah. that just happened. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> Didn't really accomplish anything except keep your drinks cold and lost me a gold, but that's fine. I have over 150 of the damn things. That's a sacrifice I'm willing to make. Speaking right. of, my five tankards, how much did they cost? Um, Was they... Yeah, they would have been a gold apiece. Okay. Alright. Um, so is there any else pressing that uh, anyone wants to do for this span of time? Not in particular. Um, Young is like, continuing. Did Oak get feedback um, yet from his sister? Young is continuing to uh, drink herself uh, sleepy. Um, because she wants to just forget all the craziness that went down as of late. Um, and Oak has finished with the sending spell to uh, uh, Jilly, and has returned to Locke. I may have just imagined it, but did you ask? That's actually really clever, Locke. I like that. Silver will appreciate it, I'm sure. <laughs> like I said to them, I've had to get creative with spell application. Watch, they're going to sit there and pretend it's only been like five minutes. Well, I mean, we actually it's... missed a whole day. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Um, and... So you guys continue um, as you are progressing and sort of waiting on what will happen if Silver returns. Um, it gets to be about, um, we'll say, roughly like 1, 2 p.m. You've been here for, since you came in in the early part of the mornings, it's been maybe five or six hours at this point. Um, a little less, and Silver has not returned yet, um, Oak, and, and as you, you know, as it progresses through the day, uh, Malia comes over to, uh, chill the drinks again, as it were. Um. <laughs> I didn't specify until she gets back, so. <laughs> you did indeed, and Malia very much appreciates the gold, um. And uh, she's like, at least this is just a cantrip for me, so I'm not using up too many spell slots myself. Plus, though I may not have ever used Chill Touch for that sort of thing before, I'm used to being paid for things over time like that, so it's fine. <laughs> um, right. Also, here's a question for you, Locke. Um, in all of your many, many stories and things that you have read when you were up in uh, 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 Sevenora with your mom's library. 
Did you ever read any stories that were not necessarily directly to the arcane? Or would you say that um, he's ever really read any stories or experienced a... Read stories about or experienced a circus? I mean, maybe? I mean, we've already established that he's read things that are a that are essentially a, the fantasy equivalent of a Houston space program. <laughs> this is true. That's why I was bringing that like, up. Like, like, like uh, I mean, when he was a little younger, maybe, because, you know, circuses are kind of fun for kids, I guess. So, like, he probably would have, like, read one or a thing or two about traveling circuses and carnivals or whatever. Okay. Um... So, especially in her going back and forth, how whenever she jumps down from the stage and back up on the stage, she is constantly flipping. Um, something with the way that Malia is acting and moving gives you in mind a, of a, like, habitual circus performer. Habitual. Oh, boy. Meaning that she... She doesn't have to think about it anymore. It's it's muscle memory. She did it so much <laughs> that it's just something she does without thinking about it. I mean, if that's the case, uh, <laughs> she must be remarkably strong in that small body to do that so much. Mm-hmm. She is. Because it, it, it takes a fair amount of muscle to successfully front flip. And back oh, yeah. flips are even harder. I speak from experience on that. Because I could do front flips for a little while at the local swimming pool. Back flips? Uh, I, I, I spine flopped. And uh, the, whole, the whole pool went dead silent when that happened. And everyone thought I died for a second because my bubbles were coming up because I was screaming underwater. Right. <laughs> um, it, it's, it's worth noting um, that she... She may be a small warlock of similar uh, make to you, though not in the same situation as you. Um, but she is not a warlock with a strength of six. She is a warlock with a strength of, like, 16, probably. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, and a little a gnome, too. A full order of magnitude mightier than me. Oh, Jesus. She, she's a tough little girl. Um... Um, but anyway, uh, as you guys are, you know, going back and forth and continuing with waiting, essentially waiting for, uh, Silver to return, and about the afternoon part of the day, um, the, uh, aforementioned sexy cat lady appears. Oh. Um... She comes in from uh, outside. She sort of eyes that there's a lot of people that showed up. There, there's like this little faint um, ear twitch of, of like the added sort of nuance of sound um, because, you know, Yong is trying to carry on a conversation with the uh, tavern keep and other such things. And I'd imagine there's some degree of small talk between characters, even if we don't RP it. Um, and then she will make her way over here. And Locke tries not to stare too hard as she's going by. Nice. Oh, you're teenager. you're <laughs> trying not to stare at her too much? Trying try not to stare too much. I mean, it's sexy cat girl and I'm a teenager. Come on. I mean, yeah. Um... And, and I mean, it, is she dressed the same way as she is in her token? Um, similar, yeah. She's very light on the uh, clothing department. Then, then yeah, Locke's you know, like pubescent hormonal mind is being like, "Ooh, sexy thing." <laughs> <laughs> um, make for me a perception check. Oh boy. Fifteen. All right, not bad. Um, so you are. You're watching her and, and, and watching her very attractive form, as it were. Um, and, and you're not too... Not to, like, you're like, not like, too distracted. Like, Stop staring. Yeah. You're not too distracted by it to catch on a very interesting feature that is not on her token. Um, uh, she has... Um, hand wraps. 
the like martial arts hand wraps mm. um that are around her hands and fingers and essentially claws because tabaxi um and you see that they have been like scuffed up and as if they have been in recent use so you have not necessarily bloody per se but dirty um so so she is definitely a monk uh-huh she is indeed we've already, we've already established that molly is a warlock don't know what the blinkling is Goliath uh, probably hits things really the hard. Bard. <laughs> right, Blinkling's bard. the bard. Right, so bard, warlock, monk, Gol the Goliath lady is probably a, a hit people really hard lady. Um, are you at, at this point seeing this and making this connection? Is Locke trying to uh, do some sort of visual ascertaining of class? <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, okay, so she has like uh, so that one has a pixie that dances around, and she has magic, and the, that one make make a perception really check to give to to give the Goliath a look. I figured it would be an insight check, but I have five. Well, insight would also work. <laughs> what to notice? In, okay, insight so it, in, insight could also work. That's fine. Oh, good because I actually have a bonus on insight. Thirteen total. Um. Well, her her overall appearance, um, she she is strong. That's a given. A lot of the, the characters in this party are rather strong, um, except maybe the blankling. <laughs> um, but she doesn't necessarily strike you as a uber aggressive type not in the visual uh, martial sense of the term um and you notice that she has a so she sort of kept it to her side um as she's sitting down in the corner there is a kendo staff that is resting um next to her um she sort of strikes you as Rather than say a warrior or a, a fighter or a barbarian, um, she sort of has a uh, demeanor about her that matches up with, uh, oddly enough, Cal. You didn't see her fight very much, but you saw her when she was in more adventuring clothes for a while, when she may or may not have left off with Ribbon, and then Ribbon didn't want her to come, which was sad. Um, but, uh, perhaps Druid, randomly? Huh. Interesting. Um, this would be a... This would be a, as it, as established, a Blinkling Bard, a Gnome Warlock, a, tax, a Tabaxi Monk, and a Goliath Druid. That is a very interesting party makeup. It is makeup. indeed. <laughs> um, All right. so... Following that, um, it continues on through the rest of the afternoon, gets later into the evening, um, the Blinkling sort of is wandered off stage and is sitting and getting him a drink or two, um, and so's the, uh, gnome, and all of a sudden, between them, poof, silver. <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> uh, Silver, make for me a perception check. Not gonna be hard. Seven. Oh, you rolled a seven. Never mind then. Oh my God. Um. So you bamf, you reappear near the uh, counter, um, and you have said adventuring party that I mentioned before surrounding you, uh, or sort of surrounding you. And the Blinkling sort of jumps, and he's like, Whoa, hello. Oh, I'm sorry. Hello. Did you have to plane shift in the middle of the tavern? It was the fastest way to get back. I didn't want to walk too far. Right. Now just imagine if one of us had been sitting in that chair. Chair? She looks at the chair. <laughs> 
it, it's, Lock waves over. Hey, your drinks are gold. What's the state of the chair in? Uh, it's knocked over because you weren't sitting down when you reappeared where it was. <laughs> oh, okay. But it's fine, more or less. <laughs> she's she's going to be like, I'll be right back, Lock. And she's going to run upstairs to find a room. Okay. Find what? A room for her to stay in. She also oh. bought a room for herself. Yeah, right, okay. that's that's totally fine. There's a key in rooms and things. Yeah. <laughs> and after a minute, she comes back and just like you know tuning um, hands. A- as you as you go upstairs, armor. as you go upstairs to go get your your room and other such things, um, you notice He's through the tavern windows it's nighttime. The hell? You left in you left in the morning. God, I hate this time Such differential thing. <laughs> All right, then you come back downstairs. You're, you, you know, rid yourself of your armor for now. Oh, freedom. I can stretch. And you come back downstairs, <laughs> and you have your drinks that are still cold, even though you've been gone for most of the day. Why are these cold? I... It is nighttime. I did a thing. What did you do, Locke? Well, I, I paid, well, I I paid someone to do a thing. I did nothing. Okay, who did you pay to do something, and what did they do to my drinks? They made them cold with magic, and I paid the flippy one, and I point at Malia. <laughs> flippy one. Yep. Oh. And as you turn when he says flippy one, uh, Malia literally goes, "That would be me." Flip. Thunk. Hi. <laughs> Flip right on the spot, god damn it. Just ah. just like just like in place, front flip. Boing. Ah, flippy one. Got it. Mm-hmm. I swear that is the only way she moves. She does she like she doesn't step, she doesn't jump, she flips everywhere she goes. It's a flip. It's amazing, but how do you not get dizzy, woman? I'm used to it. You know what? That's a fair answer. <laughs> You're not going to believe this, Locke. I saw centaurs. I have... Riven, my magic comes from a, like, 500-foot tall tentacle thing in the middle of a marsh. I'm willing to believe just about anything. But, bravo, good for you. That's amazing. Centaurs, they have two rib cages. Have fun sleeping with that. Uh, uh Malia, who is still next to you... <laughs> uh, Malia, who is still next to you... She's going to start drinking. <laughs> Um, she needs Ma- now. <laughs> Malia, Malia, who's you know still standing next to you, she say that she goes. <sighs> Most centaurs are okay. A lot of them are jokes, jerks though. <sighs> and they all have two skeletons. Well, they have a uh, two, or two sets of cages. Is what I mean. Yeah, two sets of limbs. Uh, well, legs. Yeah. Two rib cages, two sets, of, two sets of four limbs, two pelvises. We don't want to get anyway. into the science of it. Shish. Yeah. <laughs> Silver downed her first drink. She's moving on to the <laughs> next one. Fuck, oh, Jesus. Don't go too fast with those. Should I start rolling? Um, what did we say it was for your rolls? Like three or four, I think. Um, like in well, before... the thing is, I'm before like how many drinks can I have before I have to start rolling for a Constitution I th- save? I think we said initially for you it was like three. I want to say. You got to remember, my con- this Constitution is different from Riven's. Right, I know. Oh, right, you're right. Riven's was the three. Um. Yes. Because I think her Constitution was seven. So we'll say on the second drink you have to start rolling then. Oh no, her Riven's constitution is a two. Oh, so it's the other. One. It, well, it's it's Wait, based no. on it's the the based the, on the, the number. The statistic that I had for whether or not you could take a drink or not was actually based on as much race as it was stat. Mhm. So that, and the reason I set it up that way is so that someone like Yong, who is a dwarf. Would be a little hardier than say. And so would half orcs. Never mind. 
Right. So it it Riven was a half orc, so Riven would have be hardier than Silver, at least in that regard. But I'm just trying to remember. It's just like I think we said three for Sil- for for Riven, and it was five for Yon. Well, technically, Riven's constitution is fifteen, and I thought it was supposed to be like half of that. Yeah. Either way, go I ahead. Thought and roll. Was, I thought I, I always I always thought it was just like one plus your con modifier. That's how I do it. But all right. Either way, okay. it it doesn't matter. Go ahead and roll. Go ahead and roll your constitution save. I haven't seen it. I did. It hasn't shown up yet. Oh. Poo. I hope my internet's not being stupid. There we go. There it is. There. It's a 21. <laughs> yep, I see that. So you're fine. I bought five drinks. Yeah, you're fine on the first one. Cool. Or, well, second one, All right. I guess. All right. so. <laughs> Silver's going to look at for Yang. Like, what is she doing? Uh, um, at this me. point, late in the afternoon and evening, Yang is mostly asleep in the corner. Yep, that's Yang for you. <sighs> Do you... Are you, like... <laughs> Yep, you're on 25. You're fine. It's like she becomes more sober as she drinks. <laughs> yeah, no, she's like, we're home, relax. She's relaxed. She's enjoying herself. Fair enough. Dude. Hey. All right. So as you get as it gets into the night, as you're continuing to enjoy your drinks, um, 19. These two go. I'm just gonna on... finish rolling the rest of them. Yeah, you're fine. Ooh, a fourteen on that last one. Yeah. Um. Did you get? You got like a gold in drinks, so you got nothing that was super. No, I got. I spent five gold. Well, you for spent five, five drinks. You spent one gold on an individual drink. You so you just yes. did it five times. Yes. Um. It wasn't necessarily a super strong alcoholic drink, but no, I'm guessing by the fifth one she has a little buzz. Oh yeah, by the end you're you're fairly buzzed and nice and calm, as it were. <laughs> as well as we'll probably be wanting to discuss our next adventuring move come the next day, then, since uh, not all of us are currently in our right state of mind. And uh, I'm yeah. in the right state of mind, thank you very much. Locke just kind of. Looks at the five emptied mugs on the table. And she looks at her 28 con save. <laughs> <laughs> she, yes. like, she like pulls up her set. See? Where where did you even... What is that? What? It's, just, it's just a paper with numbers written on it. How is that even <laughs> relevant? 28 con... What the hell is a constitution save? It's fine. Um... <laughs> No, it's not fine, mysterious, disembodied voice. voice. I want answers. <laughs> <laughs> um, Silver, um, as you yes. were sitting, as you were sitting there enjoying your drink, the uh, the uh, human, um, it was the uh, human with the gills that you had mentioned met before. That was the uh-huh. uh, bar- bartender. Yes. Um, she sort of wanders over, ha- having you seen that you've drank all those drinks, and she's... You're quite the hearty one. Um, I think your friend over there wanted you to have a couple more. Here you go. And she sets two more down. Okay. Which friend? That was my question. She points to the corner. The, Gol- the Goliath. <laughs> so we're like, tans and looks. <laughs> the... Give a nice... Flashy smile and waves. She she sort of does that uh, akin to a nod and that sort of salute kind of wave with like two fingers. And she's just watching you. Oh, thank you. She goes and starts drinking on her sixth one. Um, since you're already oh, buzzed and you. Oh Jesus Christ! Hang on. <laughs> since since you're already buzzed, this is starting to get harder for you to do. Roll that one at disadvantage. Ah. Uh, 
Doesn't matter how hardy you are. It's another 14. Doesn't matter how hardy you are. After enough drinks, it starts to mess with anybody. Yeah, so it's a 14. Yeah. Same as my other last one. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Going on to the last one. Last one, disadvantage. Is it 18? Jeez. Jesus Christ. You're getting well into those drinks there. So, this yeah, is nice... Uh -oh. Nice buzz. Um, and as if she just suddenly appeared, I don't know what, uh, if it would amount to silver in the same, uh, a slightly drunk silver in the same way that it did to a uh, prepubescent lock. Pretty, ta pretty uh, sexy cat lady over there. Um, almost like you just Should noticed that she was there. <laughs> Oh, sneaky. <laughs> but yeah. Um, the two oh, I thought you were going to say that that cat... Oh, I, was, I, I thought you were going to say that the cat lady had just appeared at our table. It's like, hi. <laughs> no, no, she's not. Because that would have been about the time where Locke would engage tomato mode. <laughs> tomato <laughs> mode? <laughs> tomato mode means he's turning, would mean he's turning red. Yeah. Um... Thankfully, uh, though she is very pretty, um, this particular uh, tabaxi is not necessarily the most social type. So, she's hanging out right where she is. Um, but, uh, yeah, these two are continuing their performance. It seems as though most people in this party have decent charisma, but the highest would be these two up here. <laughs> Neat. <laughs> so they're sitting there enjoying it. <laughs> mm hmm Um. <laughs> would, I, I guess technically it would, would being mostly drunk affect memory? Probably. Probably. Um. Well, actually. You know, that reminds me, what the hell has Cad been up to all this time? Because it's mostly been the yeah, lock. Yeah, he's driven. just been yeah. sitting there just what like is, What is Cad doing? Is, That's a good point. It's been like the Lock and Silver show all session. What has the Elephant Man been doing since coming to the tower? Um, what has Oak been doing? He's been spending the last couple hours apparently attempting to cast Sending, I guess. I don't know. Like He, he cast Sending to Jack, and then he's just been sitting with Lock and Jack enjoying donuts and other such things for most of He's been enjoying donuts the whole day. He's well, just been sitting there like as hey, much good as luck, good luck. Good as luck much as Jack you guys have, <laughs> anyway. As much as Jack's had donuts and and food, Oak has had donuts and food. <laughs> um, what is Cat doing? Um, sure. Uh, he's been sitting at a table in the corner and periodically watching the uh, drink off and just <laughs> randomly writing stuff in a book that's not finished. Cat, 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 cat. What? <laughs> Get your ass over here. Stop brooding. Come, sit now. Oh. Okay. Yay! <laughs> like Ooh. getting a good at this interested look like I don't think I don't think we've had drunk silver yet, have we? No, you oh. haven't. Okay, I and got. She's it. not fully drunk. That. She oh. is like she is drunk, but she can still function slightly. Okay, right. okay then. Locke is uh. Is the bartender within thirty feet of me. Who? The bartender. Oh yeah, definitely. Okay. She's, Silver's I'm... gonna look at Cat and be like, Cat, do you drink? Please uh, tell me you drink. Uh, not as comedically as you. <laughs> it's not comedic. Locke is going to use Awakened Mind to the barkeep. Okay. And silently request more, dr and, you know, request more drinks for Silver. <laughs> and Silver's going to be like, I need a drinking buddy because my drinking buddy is already out. She points at Yong. And some for Cat, I add on. <laughs> a few for the Elephant Man, too. Oh, uh, sure. Okay, Yay! Peer pressure. Bartender! Uh, I, I already took care of it. Oh, thank you, Locke. 
Ow, you didn't even move. I tap my head. What does your head have to do with it? I drop my hand Oops. and use Oops. Awaken Oops. Mind on Silver to and use Awaken Mind on Silver to say, Did you forget I can talk telepathically? Oh right, you can do that. Yeah, She's actually saying it this out loud as she is thinking it. <laughs> like, <laughs> yes, that is a superpower I have. What's a superpower? It is a power, and it lets me do super things, like order oh. you drinks without getting up. I imagine the drinks show up as I'm saying that. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Show up as I'm saying that for comedic effect. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah, I'm they do. This now. Awesome. Right. More drinks. Constitution saves How again. Many? How many? Uh, I, I was imagining like, uh, like, uh, like three for each. That's what I was thinking. Three. Yeah, three for Cad, three for Silver. So that would be six. Make three uh, saves then. Um. And also, Cad, since you are in my bubble, you do get a plus yeah. four to your Constitution save. <laughs> uh, oh boy. La. Uh, I'm assuming. Cad never really drunk. Has Cad? Would Cad have ever had a moment where he's passed an ale or two among the other guards? Probably not. Not a whole lot. Um, but you are a very hearty sort. Um, so I was, I always try to push for making race just as much of a factor in how hearty a person is as much as. Uh, Stats, since you know race can affect your stats, um, and loxodons are a hearty bunch. Three drinks is not going to do a dad blame thing to you, even though you've never drunk. Ah. <laughs> okay. Walk oh. Is oh. oh yes. <laughs> oh yes. Oh yes. So now she is fully drunk and is slurring heavily. Uh huh. And she starts going on retailing the battle that they had. Which one? Of against the hag and the ogres and stuff. Of how Cad the mighty hero came in with his giant axe and just slays through, like basically just very slurry. And then she just like slowly slumps down in a chair, like. <laughs> you having fun over there? Um, what, silver. are you not having fun? Speaking of art. Oh, silver. I'm having a great time. Silver, perception <laughs> check at disadvantage. <laughs> Twelve. Well, um, so what you see is... she She's being loud and stuff and she's going on about their tales. Um, so what you see and what you sort of get the sense of is the other like patrons and things uh, like NPC patrons that I don't have tokens for that are in here everyone is very interested in your tale mm -hmm. um, and seems super interested as if it, you are a bard or a performer and what I you mean, don't what you don't realize wait, is since it's, this, it's, 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 hold on oh no it's a ten performances. Bad. Oh. No, 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 no. You roll that performance. No? You you roll that performance flat. You would have disadvantage, but someone's helping you. Oh God. Oh, okay. I'll re-roll it. <laughs> no, you don't have to re-roll it. I'll just take the twenty-one. It's fine. Oh, oh. God. <laughs> um, because they were helping you before you even rolled it. Um, it's just your perception of twelve. You don't pick up on it necessarily at first. Um. Oh, is someone playing epic music along? Sort of. Um, the oh, cool. Uh, Molly, uh, Malia is using Minor Illusion to play like epic battle music in the background, <laughs> and the actual bard is using Minor Illusion to don up images of your friends to do a mock-up battle as well. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's a very Locke good show. Locke is watching. Locke is watching all of this play out like. And in his mind, I was like, you know, this isn't at all how the fight actually went, but I'll be damned if Drunk Silver is not an amazingly entertaining storyteller. Speaking of, where is Jack? Where's little Jack? <laughs> like right Jack is... Us. Okay. <laughs> Engrossed in this tale. 
Jack is very Whoa. much engrossed. Jack is very much engrossed in his tail. He's not sitting on a chair. He's just sitting on the floor, looking up at all the images in the air as you're talking. Oh, there was yeah. something I was going to sit there and do. Um. Oh, there. right. Can Cat yeah. and Locke actually roll perception checks for me? Uh, oh, can too. Oh. Because uh, there's I... something that she did while she was actually telling the tale. Do I need to roll the advantage to see if I smell it? No, you won't be able to smell it. 17. It... You want me to roll it for uh, Cat or uh, for Oak as well? Oak, yes. If Oak doesn't get a 15. Rolled it. I started. I <laughs> started 18. to hit the wrong number there. Uh. <laughs> he rolled an 18. Call it. <laughs> 16. Did he have rolled up her sleeves? To her tunic, so they're like kind of up, like mid, like uh, bicep, and you can actually see just above her elbow, there are like scar, thick scars. Ooh. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Locke will briefly lose his smile when he sees those things, but will not interrupt the story because... She's having fun! He's having fun? Everyone else is having fun? Who the fuck is Locke to ruin everyone's good mood? Yeah. We'll bring that up later. Yeah. Uh, Silver is gonna try to be like, I don't want a donut. <laughs> I am hungry. I need a donut. Um, Locke gives her a donut. <laughs> there, no, <laughs> before before Locke gets her the donut, the donut floats into the air and is right over her face. Oh, she tries to grab it. And and, and everyone like, who's everyone who's paying donut. attention, everyone who's paying attention and who is not you know watching Silver direct, uh, directly and is paying attention to those who are helping her performance, sees that Malia is going back and forth like a like with a puppeteer in a string. It's just like trying to grab the donut and it's just getting more and more frustrated. Like, come here, deliciousness. Yeah. <laughs> and then you have it. There it is. <laughs> I win. Walk is just watching all of this with this increasingly enormous grin on his face. Okay. Mm hmm. Oh, well, she still has two more drinks. You do, you do have two more drinks. No, no, no. Oh, 14. I mean, you're already <laughs> drunk, so. I like, how am I feeling? Um. Like, you'll pass out on your next drink, I imagine. <laughs> you, how many I, has she had today? A lot. I think you're uh, getting pretty, I one, think you're getting pretty close. Four, five. Silver, Six, seven, Silver, eight, nine, Silver fairly well knows her limit on a good <laughs> Silver barely knows her limit on a good day, and you're getting pretty close to that sort of uh, that threshold that you remember normally. You remember and think of of yeah, you might want to slow down, unless you want to pass out. That was her tenth drink. Yeah. Roll again at disadvantage if you have your, if you want to drink your last one. She, she's just gonna go like halfway through and be like, oh boy. This has been fun. There is a... What time is it? There is a, like, group of four sets of applause and claps that you don't realize, and you look she's to the like, others... confusingly, like, looks around, and she's, like, flush. <laughs> Just like, what? You, you see... And <laughs> starts clapping as um, well. You see that the, the four of, of the other NPC party are all clapping for you, and you see an why, image why of... Why are we clapping? <laughs> You, you see, an, as you look towards them, you see an image of yourself as a minor illusion that bows in tandem with the blinkling bard and bows in front of you, and then disappears. Oh! <laughs> she wants more. <laughs> Very well done. <laughs> and then the blinkling right. wanders over to you and is like, Not a bad story. Not sure how true and it she's is. She's like but slowly if swaying in her suite. Oh, thank you. I might want to get you some sleep now. I will. She drunkly gets up and goes over and tries to pick up <laughs> Yong. Okay. Roll for me a uh, uh, strength check. Strength I guess check. It... Disadvantage. 
I guess it would be a disadvantage, yeah. What is Silver doing? Picking She's up picking Yong. up Yong. Oh god. <laughs> oh, six! She falls down next to her. So, no, Yong was leaning up against the wall on a chair. You go to pick her up, and you both land in the floor. <laughs> Snore. Oh yeah, Yong's out. <laughs> Silver, it's like, oh, this floor is very nice. Uh, snore. Locke will turn to Oak and say, I think that was worth the wait. Maybe. That, 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 that entire spectacle was absolutely worth the wait and the lack of sleep that all of these donuts are going to incur on me. Maybe. Not necessarily uh, everyone will drink, that, drink themselves silly like that, but it was a very amusing show, I'll give you that. You know, I'm half tempted one of these days to get drunk myself just to see what happens, but no, first of all. No. I have standards. I won't let you. I'm, I'm 16, and I don't like the taste. And you're small, so no. Well, I mean, compared we to drink you, yeah. Well, well, I mean, compared to you, yeah, I'm small. You're a furball. You're like... Eight foot something? You're tall is the point. Yeah, yeah. Hey. And, uh... Well, no. As, as uh, the, the day is winding down, these two here make their way past to head out, and, um... The, the Goliath sort of stops behind Locke and... S <laughs> Not a bad storyteller. Does she have to do it while drunk? To be fair, I have never seen her as lively as that. And Locke immediately like, grabs one of the empty mugs and uses it to try and hide his face when he sees the, like, the cat lady right there. Just like, uh, no, oh no. Oh, they're over here. No, no. Oh no, do not stare at the tits. <laughs> stare at drink. <laughs> stare at drink. Use or it to hide shove the... your face. Stuff a donut in your face. Like, oh, no, I can't. Yep, I yep, can't that, 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 that too. That too. <laughs> Just. Try to uh, extremely obvious and awkwardly trying not to draw attention to the fact that he is turning into a tomato right now. <laughs> <sighs> um, he 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 so the the she, the Goliath sort of looks and smiles at you and goes, <laughs> "Looks like you caught another another one, River Dance." Backseat girl just sort of shrugs, and the two of them make their way on out. Locke sits down to Tankard, stands up. I'm going to go to bed. Um, for what it's worth, River Dance appeared to be the name That's of the tabaxi. Nice. Uh, okay. That's an interesting name, but all right. Mm -hmm. All right. And with that, Locke is going to decide that uh, he is done for the day <laughs> and is going to make his way back to the library to sleep the night away. Jack is right on your tail, by the way. Okay. Yeah. Oak will get him a room and go on upstairs for the night. I'm assuming Cad does much the, much the same. Yep. Um. You guys get some rest. Um, morning comes. Hangover for Yong and Silver. Hooray. <laughs> um, oh, God. These guys are long gone. Piff. Um, so, you guys wake up in the floor, in the corner, by the way. And Yong is just immediately... <sighs> I totally did not fall over. What the crap? You did, oh, you did fall over. Mm. You pulled me down with you. Mm. You weren't even back when I passed out. I always, and I had a few drinks. I tried to be nice and take you to a room. And then you pulled me down to the floor, and I just... Eh. 
<laughs> oh. Just, just like this long droning. Oh. Oh. Yeah, that. <laughs> um, and then eventually Oak will make his way down from the morning, and he's morning sunshine, smiling at both of you. <laughs> Silver's out again. She's just <laughs> trying to go back to sleep like, yes. <laughs> Young sort of just like holds at her face and temple and she's just, Ugh. Oak, do the thing. The, the thing. Do the thingy thingy. Make us better. <laughs> and he just places, Oak places his hand on her shoulder and, okay, much better. Thank you. Uh, how long does it take her to come back? Most of the night, or most of the day, anyway. Right. I suppose she was there for almost an hour, but that would take most of the day. I miss anything? A rather cool retelling of uh, our battle with the Annis Hag. Totally wrong on some parts, but... Go to sleep. Um... Yeah, no. It rolls over. Who... Did you, wait, you're the bard. Did you tell a story or something? And I missed it? No, no, not not me. And Oak points to Silver. She... Oh, she was a... Okay, whatever. She's slightly drooling. <laughs> Do you want to wake her up? <laughs> not particularly. She seems to be enjoying herself. Looks... <laughs> Plus, so, uh, uh, Locke's not here yet anyway. And this is about the point, probably, that Cag comes downstairs. How did everyone sleep? They slept on the floor, says Oak. But I think mostly okay. Young, what do you say? My back hurts. Does that count? Totally did not sleep on the floor. I was here, on a stool, balanced and perfectly fine. And somebody knocked me down. He did! Hilarious. <laughs> Whatever. Lock. We go to you. And I'm in my house. Yep, you're waking up for the next morning. Um, Jack probably got a uh, some variant of a sleeping bag from Alessandra and was resting next to your bed in the loft. Hmm. But you guys eventually got some sleep a little bit later than normal because, you know, hyper and donuts. Um, right. You probably regaled a story or two. Actually, Jack did tell you a story. Um, it, it was apparently stuff that his sister, Jalay, would always write. She was always writing, like, fantastical tales of adventure and monsters and things. Things he's never even heard of. Um... Roll for me, um... Pose, this would be... Actually, yeah. He, he, he tells you a couple of them because he's hyper and sort of energetic. History, arcana, nature. Boom, boom, boom. Did back he even back. go back to sleep? Eventually. Huh. History. Arcana. Funny. Nature. Oh, nature. Okay. So a six, okay. a twenty, and a three. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So he he sort of regales you these these in, in sort of inspiring base stories. Um, it's it's almost inspiring as if he's telling a story like a bard, as if you don't know too many bards already. Um, but and it seems to be you know he gets into like motor mouth mode and he's talking about a whole bunch of things. Um, the history the the. Tales and like worlds and kingdoms and things, none of them make any sense to you. They are not places that you've heard of. There are probably places in the Feywild that you are not used to and you just don't know the names. Um, he tells of you these these fantastical creatures and other such things that they're never that none of them are anything that you've heard of. Um, but he describes the use of several different spells and. It seems as though um, the, the stories that he's telling tell the story of perhaps a combination bard sorcerer. 
um, with, with all sorts of fun details and things like super well placed fireball that was like meta magic to not affect a forest and a jungle but to kill off these crazy snake people you don't know what the, about anything about the snake people um, it, it's just this, this nice tale and it eventually lulls you to sleep and he sort of motor mouths himself out and falls asleep And then you get some good rest. Nice. Well, then... When I, uh... Awake and then... Uh, probably once the first thing I'll say once we've had a chance to actually, like, wake up is look down and be like, you are quite talkative when you've had a lot of donuts. You know that? Energy. I'm sorry. No, it's fine. We just have to not give you that many donuts in the future. Probably not, no. Ow. Upset stomach. <laughs> stomach hurting? A little bit, yeah. Hmm. I wonder if minor restoration will do it for stomach cramps. Somewhat, yeah, says your mother, hearing part of the conversation. Oh, cool. Is that a thing you can do? Uh, no. But I'm sure Oak can. Probably. He's done it before. Well, he's used it to clean up hangovers. He does it on Young a lot. All right. I will stand up, dust myself off. Come along then. We'll get your tummy ache fixed up. And then uh, me and the others are going to need to discuss what our next move is. We do still have work to do, after all. Right. Okay. Hmm. And he will follow you back to the tavern. Back to the tavern we go. Um, so, Silver... Do you eventually wake up? Yeah, she she probably wakes up after like another five minutes. Okay, so just probably just as Locke and uh, Jack are coming in, then Oak's like, "Okay, well we still have some things to do here, Silver. Want to get your wits about you with the lesser restoration?" Huh? Your hangover. Oh right. Yes. Uh. He he sort of waves his hand as it glows magically, and he's like, "I can get rid of that." Remember? I said right. Please do. <laughs> tap on sh tap on hand on shoulder. Whoosh. Oh, thank gods. <sighs> yeah, we also have a belly ache over here that could use the same treatment. Um. Oh, hi, hi, Locke. Hey. You are hilarious when you're drunk. You know that? <laughs> I am. Hilarious and very entertaining to watch. I was just enjoying myself. Don't hate. I'm not hating. It was wonderful to see. It's nice to see you loosen up for a bit for a change. Well, we've been so busy. We have been. It, it was good to loosen up just a little bit. I'll give you that. So the... I mean, I didn't see you touching any of the booze, but all right. <laughs> no, I didn't. I'm... Of course, I was I'm not enjoying talk. I didn't either. I, I I was loosening it up in other ways, relaxing, meditating, other such things. But uh, yeah. All right. So, what's our plan then? Well, oh, um, Jack, um. You're... I did... She, um, so she said she was sorry that she was busy when we initially tried to contact her, but um, she... I, I sent a sending, uh, a sending spell to your sister again this morning, and she said that she is on her way to Yukiyagi now. Yay! Clap, clap, clap. You made sure to instruct her to head for the library run by Alessandra, right? Because that's where of course, she's probably going yeah. to be staying. Okay. Okay, just wanted yeah. to make sure we had it, that. It, just, it, it just may take her a couple weeks to get here. She's a bit further out. Apparently she was doing something in the quarry up near Curacao. So she's she's got a ways out. But she's going to be making her way up here. All right. All right, so what is our plan then? Well... 
if we could get a view of the world map to plan our route, that'd be handy. <laughs> Oak will break, like out. Oak will break out his up. map. Okay. So, we know of at least two more of these shrines we need to hit. Or at the very uh -huh. least, that we've decided to hit. The project specifically that they were being used for has apparently already come and gone. But right now, Dahlia is definitely not on our friends list. She's helping Nero, and Nero is our enemy, so we weaken her influence here, we weaken him, and we can get to him at another time. Did we ever get the... She's Silver, like, sits down at the table and be like, can we get some food? Also, were the points for the other temples point, pointed out to us of, like, the locations? Uh, yeah, or general she... area? Uh, Two of the um, general locations. Um, one was in the I uh, uh, Saglance Bluff, down near uh, to the west of Camperton. Then the other one, I believe, if I'm remembering correctly, was in Muzachad. For us to see, right. you're going to be needing to get a boat. Right. So, if I'm, you know, figuring this right, chances are our Best bet. Well, remember, we have to go back through Fumok. We do? Yes. I say we head to Fumok because I need to pick up something that I told the lady to make me, remember? Oh, right. Okay. Yes. Okay. Go to Fumok, oh. and then we'll make our way back down to Pass Caberton. Right. And stuff to... We'll How do you pronounce to... that village? For the fishing? Uh, Damapur. Or are we going to? Are you talking about the one over here? No, right here. Yes, yeah, sir. Right yes, yeah, sir. Yes. So what I'm figuring then is before we get too close to Caberton, because we are probably wanted to hell and back there, we splinter away from the road and trek through wilderness to get to Saglan's Bluff. Deal with whatever we need to deal with there. Actually, I suggest we just skirt around Caberton and stay on the road. Probably wise. Hmm. Well, either way, we want... regardless, we would want to deal with the affairs in Saglan's Bluff first, then get to Eazer in order to get to Muzashad. That's why I say we take this path and stuff, so that way we hit the temple near Saglan's Bluff. Eh. And then right. we'll take a boat over. Right. So we hit the bluff first, take a boat to deal with the second one, and it's pretty much just we're dealing with the first one on the way to the second one, more or less. Yes. Right. Is that Several the... days Silver travel. does note that Eosaur has boats for rent, right? Oh, yeah. Or Definitely. for hire. Okay. All right, that is good. You, to you've know you've been on the you. you've been on the docks before, been near the docks before yourself. She was an orphan in that town. Were you um, orphaned in Easer or in Bluff? Yes, and there is is there a small village near the Bluff? And probably I a rather think there is. probably a rather small one. Yes. No, she would be in like a proper city where she, in like an orphanage or something. Yep, Easer. Then. then she was. Then was brought to the Slagnet Bluff later on to be raised. Yep. So yeah, EA. So then. All right. So that if, if you if you were in a big city that wasn't a big capital city, but you were near the bluff, it would have been EA. So then. Yeah. Okay. okay. So you know of the docks. It's a town that they would go to to get uh, supplies as well for. Like... Yep. 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 Makes perfect sense. And also, you would have been on the docks a little bit. You would have seen boats go in and out. You know mm -hmm. that there's docks and things that you can rent. But I don't know necessarily if Cause Silver has Because she's been ever... to, to that town and Caverton uh, while she was growing up in the bluffs. She would go along with like a few carts yep. for people who are doing supply runs. Also, uh, just a quick point of order because I'm trying to do some maths in my head over here. Um, since apparently the measurement of t of time travel of the travel time between Eazer and Muzachad is not accurate over the water, uh, how long roughly would a boat ride take? Um. Well, you do go a fair distance 
on water usually uh, at least when the winds with you um, you, you go over water a bit faster um, Locke would have never really been on a boat so he wouldn't know um, at least how fast it would travel but for sake of out of character stuff you're probably assuming the winds with you you're probably looking at about a week or so on water as opposed to three days on the map all right i ask because i'm uh, just sort of a so assuming we tack on a few extra days just to assume like staying in a location to do things or staying in a town longer than normal we're looking at roughly 50 days of travel to get both of these things and get back so 50 days round trip 50 days round trip is my current guesstimate. That might be way off depending on what happens, but assuming yeah. all goes really smoothly, the travel time would actually only be 46 days, but I tacked on an additional four just, you know, in case shit happens on the way. Right. Mm -hmm. Which it very, it very well will. <laughs> it, it, it will. This is D&D. &D. That's how this works. Hmm. So, uh, yeah. All right. Um, also... Um, you, did you, did Locke, when, when Locke was, um, when, when Locke was in Sevenor and growing up, um, did he ever have a favorite book of his mother's that he would always try to read? Uh... Or maybe in the other library somewhere. He probably had a few, and it probably like changed as he was growing up. Like, can you specify like a time frame here? Like, what like just, what just age are we thinking here? Probably just before the uh, the events with uh, your patron went down and you ran away. Something close to the end of your your arc before you left. Hmm. Um, I imagine I probably did, but I can't think of what it might be off the top of my head. Um, well, either way, um, it's of no importance that's what it is, but, uh, you, uh, in your staying with your mother, one of the things that had happened while you are in town is she gave you one of those books and says, uh, feel like I missed a birthday or two, and you missed yours, so here. Oh, shit, I'm 17 now? You are. Huh, all right, cool, okay. Oh, well, happy birthday. A bit, a bit belated, and I'm physically still 16, but you know what? Fuck it, I will take it. <laughs> <laughs> Birthdays are weird. Th that is one more stretch of things I am now legally allowed to do. <laughs> all right. Um, but yeah, by all accounts, your birthday was skipped in the three months you were gone, too. Alright, cool. Um, so, that following like, that... That means we're, like, getting under, like, towards, like, the fall seasons now. Mm-hmm, you are. Mm-hmm. Oh, boy. Um, Yuki Egi is getting fairly cold, colder because it's more wintry in mountains and getting closer to fall, so, yeah. Um... But all that being said, um, you've sort of got your plan in mind, and you're beginning to make your way down south. Anybody have anything else they want to discuss? Do before you leave town? Not that I can think of. Anything else will need to be figured out as we get closer to the shrines, because we're not at them yet. We don't know how they're laid out. We can't really have planned for anything until we know more. Yeah, that's fine. Um, alright. So, you guys are going to then venture out away from Yuki Egi, um, and as you are making your way out of, of Yuki Egi proper, um, everyone do for me a perception roll. Perception roll. Yep. Perception from everybody. Smell doesn't really help you, Mr. Elephant Man. Eight. 
and boop. Wow. Okay. Um. Uh, literally only oak because perception twelve. Um. He, as as you're starting to make your way out of town, Oak sort of looks up and looks around. Anyone else here, like thudding, like a something hitting a tree? Hmm? What? Wait. Um. Can can we? we uh, or, yeah, I kind of want to. Um. Well, let me get, wait. Are we already outside? You're making your way. You're you're outside of the tavern, but you're making your way. So we got all of our stuff and things. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, we got it. Okay. You got your I just want to make sure because <laughs> Silver to take a minute to get her armor on. <laughs> right. Oh yeah. yeah. He's going back up to your mother. Um. Right. So you guys are going to sort of sound, uh, sort of figure out your way to it because of Oak's higher perception. Um, and Oak will sort of, uh, lead the way as he's following his ears. <laughs> he's following nose. He will go over this way. Oak, Oak, where are you going? He's following it. And he sort of it's stopped Silver's it. following Oak. Yep. Mock is following them. Okay, so as you round the corner, um, everyone follows through and is wandering around the corner. Um, you see at the edge of the uh, lovely fashioned log cabin here, um, boop. Um, at the corner of the log cabin, Next to the door that's fashioned just about like right here or so, there is a post or log that has been set up and is set forward as if it's a, shall we say, target dummy. And punch, kick, toom, toom, toom. Ah. Hmm. Okay. Just practicing. Okay. We can leave that alone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um... And, uh, yeah, she's very quick and very strong. All about her punches and kicks. Hmm. You guys can make of that what you will, if anything. I was sort of like, huh. I was wondering why her, uh, her, her hand wraps were so dusty. I guess she doesn't like to not fight for a while. Hmm. Mark, you don't want to go over there and talk to her, right? You're good? I'm not getting close. <laughs> good to know. I do not want... Look, I own a cat in real life, okay? I am not going to interrupt the cat in the middle of doing something they're doing. Huh. No better than that. I, I value my hands. I don't want to lose them. <laughs> Young is, uh, has followed everybody as he went up here, and she sort of looks over towards... Baxi Monk and she's <clears throat> immediately before she even does anything, Oak is like, Yong, don't think about it. Leave her alone. <laughs> right, okay. Fine. <laughs> Silver just goes and like pats her on the shoulder like <laughs> Following that, I'm assuming everyone is ready to uh, head out. Sure. Yes. Alrighty. Um... So, uh, as you guys sort of round the corner, Oak stops and sort of looks back. Uh-oh. And then he just sort of shakes his head and moves on forward. Um, what is it, Oak? <laughs> i just going to leave that alone because I could have sworn I just heard a bear growl. I mean, one of them does seem to be a druid, so... I don't know, maybe they have a trinket. <laughs> What's a trinket? Maybe. <laughs> uh, it's like a... It's a nickname for but, a bear, I think. 
Why would someone name a bear Trink? Oh, uh, yeah. Anyway. Because trinkets are usually small and bears are big. Anyway. But bear? Let's 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 go on then. Mm-hmm. You you sure? A bear? Sounded like one. Look, unless it's part of the bare necessities of our job, I don't think we need to be... All right. I As she walks by, she slaps his forehead. Ow! No! <laughs> Stop with your puns. That was the only pun I've made in this entire journey. We haven't even started our entire journey, and you made a pun. I'm anyway. talking about since the day we've met. Oh. That counts, because we've always been doing no, shit. No, you've made puns before, I swear. Name yeah. one. Yeah, still recovering. <laughs> Excuses. So, so where you look back, then? Yes. All right. So as you look back, um, and you look back to the uh, monk with her training dummy, um, you see that there is a... I don't have a token for it, but there is a very large, um, like, full-on grizzly bear that's on the other side of the... Uh, the uh, target dummy and is clawing and swiping at said thing. Holy shit, there is a bear! <laughs> hmm? Yep. And he, he, the, the bear is just. <laughs> all sorts of crazy uh, maneuvers and the such things. The bear is just attack the a- attacking the uh, target dummy. Figured that would be gone in a minute. Okay. It, it's getting there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna waste so many training dummies. Um, and then uh, after after a moment, the uh, Tabaxi sort of just if, if you continue watching for a bit, um, the, the Tabaxi sort of holds up her hand. She doesn't say anything that you can perceive, but she sort of holds up her hand. And the bear stops, stands. Because that's bears. a very tall bear. It is a very tall bear. Is it a grizzly and, bear? And um, subsequently, uh, shrinks. Boop. Uh, yep, Drew. Okay. <laughs> yep. Okay. It was a polymorph. Okay. Or a wild shape. No wild shape. What's a wild I shape? A anyway. Look, I've, look, I I've know. Never, I have I've, to play a druid later. Yeah, I've never played a druid, so I wouldn't know. It's surprisingly difficult to make sure that you get everything straight without messing up. All right. All right. So yeah. you you guys move on forwards, and you make your way out of town. Okay. Unless you have anything else. We're off. Here we go to save the day. We're off on the ventures. Alrighty. So you guys st- down to Fumok. You guys sticking to the road and the trails then? Yep, to Fumok. Fumok. Yeah, um. uh, Maya's licking my nose. <laughs> Aw, good kitty. Like, like, can you all hear her purring? Sam no. probably can, but I cannot. I can't. Sam has amazing ears. I thought you might. Um, but yeah. So you make your way back down to Fumok. It's peaceful. You you stick to the road. There's no real perception checks or anything needed as you're traveling. Um, Yay. And you make it back to Fumok. Do you go and say hi to uh, Gabriel? Yeah, sure. I'm stopping and like pick up a few donuts for the road. <laughs> Yeah, because uh, those have become a running theme. <laughs> gives so you a smile. Bacon, it's freaking... Gives you a smile. Welcome, Jimmy, in as you're passing through. So, is in, there any conversations that we're having along this journey? Um, Locke's generally quiet mid transit. Like, I can only think of like a couple times where he's like talked to another party member in journey. And the first time I can think of it is probably one of my favorite bits of role playing where you just randomly asked Riven what her favorite color was, and they had this long winded <laughs> discussion about how the about how the multiverse worked as a result. Um, 
So Which I thought in, was great. In, in some of the transit as you're traveling down, um, Oak will sort of catch Locke as um, now he I is. can hear the purring. Well, that's because she just nuzzled the, my mic. <laughs> oh, good kitty. So uh, Locke, she's a little shit. Cat will sort of speak to Locke um, in one of the like exchanges for like watches and other such things, and he's. So, are any of us going to... And this is when Silver's asleep. Because she mm -hmm. does, like, the morning watches and things. Mm -hmm. So, does anyone want to try to, you know, it's curious about the stars and things that she had? Is that just me? If you want to ask her, Oak, you go right ahead, but... I know better than to try and poke and prod at someone's backstories. I mean... But you just said earlier that you were going to ask her later. <laughs> yeah, I said later in vague terms. I didn't hmm. apply a time directive to it. And, you know, and I'll... Good point. Look, the last time we went messing with someone's backstory... Well, I don't think I need to remind you about what happened with Riven, now do I? Yeah. Now I get that was a bit. Now I get that was a bit different, but at the same time, I'm just not willing to poke at one of those things. It could very well be a hornet's nest. The way I see it, if you want to ask her, you go for it. But I'm not going to be the one to intrude on that. All right, fair enough. Um, and then following that. Another nine or two passes, um, and then Oak will catch Silver in the uh, cusps of her watch, or, you know, getting to starting her watch and other such things. And, um, so, if you, if you don't want to say anything about it, you don't have to or anything, but you seem to know a little bit more about where we're going, the, like, Saglance Bluff. Yes, my my old temples and bluffs. So your, I know that area pretty well. Your old temple that was the temple of Helm that's in Slaglands Bunch. It's like one of the the major. It's the major temple that usually provides clerics or paladins to like Caverton and. So you would know a little bit more of what we're getting into. Do you think uh, Dahlia has messed with your temple in some way? Or is there another shrine down there, you think? Um, I don't think she messed with my temple. Because from what I could tell, mostly demons affect my temple and corruption stuff so it's we're going to a different temple for Talia okay so I guess you much know what we may be getting into then well I've never been to Dahlia's temple, so I don't know what to expect. But it's easier to stay towards the roads and stuff, and if we could maybe give a little bit more of a wide berth around the bluffs, because there's a path that goes from the road up towards the bluffs and stuff. I mean, you would see it, there's like these this like archway and stuff it's kind of squarish and it has like this uh circle on it with like uh she points out to her like uh helm uh necklace where it has that uh the back hand of the gauntlet with an eye on it with one of these and like uh rough fabric that's like tied around the pillars that's like seen wear and tear because of weather and stuff. We would see it and you would go down that path towards the bluffs. But 
if we could take it with birth because I don't know what they've been doing since it's been three months since my last check and I don't I I guess I pretty much lost all uh, any kind of knowledge because I don't know what happened in those three months so things could have changed and I'm back at square one at this she's like she slightly fidgets slightly um I know what it's like to have you know, a part of your past that you would rather not remember and want to do something about that's oh I'm fine remembering my path it's what drives me to want to make a difference in the, for the future <laughs> you're braver than I am I I just ran but you can't always say running away is a cowardice thing because sometimes running away is the smartest thing to do <laughs> but so Mm-hmm. Did you always grow up in that temple? Um... I remember when I was little, I was actually in... Okay, pronounce that city again? Easer. Easer. I was... The E and the A sort of might... The E and the A sort of turn like into... Like Eraser. <laughs> Yeah. I think he wanted to say eraser. It, it's sort of like eraser, but instead of er, it's like yay, kind of. It, the e, e and the a sir. sort of turns into yay, weirdly. Yeah. Um, eraser. Um, so, uh, when I was little, I grew up. I did in an orphanage. Because, you know, I think. I don't. I don't remember my it, it, seeing any of my parents. I just mm. figured they left me because of how I looked. And <laughs> she gestures to like the scales. <laughs> but I don't know. And mm. the my, the high commander of the temple saw me and was curious, and he took me in and raised me. So you're close to him, then? I... I, I was. Um... I don't know when it happened, but... He... turned and was... did some... I think dealings and stuff and corrupted... Like I w he he didn't want me to learn anything of being a paladin and going down that path, so it took a lot to convince him. And I just wanted to sit there and make him proud and stuff to follow in his footsteps. And he finally agreed. And um as the years went on, it, he increased my training and more taking me under the wing for uh, private tutelage of things, and I wasn't able to see him. and started seeing less of my best friend, and it was my best friend that figured out something was off. And he led a revolt against him, but the revolt failed because of my hand. Well, failed at my hand. They. Well, just thank you for being willing to share your past. Not everyone else has something. I mean,. I'm willing to share for anyone who wants to listen. They 
just have to ask. Yeah. Well, I guess I'd rather have the truth out there than some lies. So, so, so we are transparent then in that regard. If we do end up facing off the against... The closer you get, you... I will be nervous because they know I'm alive and I was supposed to be executed so there might be wanted posters of me and they might call me a heretic they blame me for all of the deaths which part of the deaths were my fault in the temple <laughs> I wasn't in the right state of mind I was influenced and I didn't see things clearly all I saw were undead and demons and I was just trying to protect my temple I was used as a scapegoat well if some circumstance happens when we go to deal with Dahlia's temple shrine or whatever it is if some circumstance happens that leads you to having to go to your old temple again you see something or someone else sees something stolen off I'll I'm and probably the rest of us are willing to <laughs> there, help him oh, I can't take on that temple alone <laughs> there's no way you don't uh <laughs> That's a suicide mission right there. You don't uh, want to run into a suicide mission then? You want some help? Yes. Though I think it would take more than just us. Because I don't <laughs> know how many people are under his control or corrupted. Well, we did deal with a large amount of cultists before. And me and Lux fought a lot of goblins before. So, that's yes, not the same thing. people with... ...that are paladins and clerics. Yeah, they'd be dumping in some crazy healing magics back and forth, huh? Yeah... You've seen how much damage I can... How much wounds I can inflict on an enemy. It's pretty amazing, too. And I'm... I'm, I'm not a full cleric. <laughs> not cleric, full paladin. Yet, uh, I'm still learning things on my own. And stuff. And these are well-trained clerics and paladins and anything else that's in the temple there. Or in Caberton or Yes or in that area. Right. So I would just say be very careful and please understand that I speak the truth. Or at least... Please think that I have to speak the truth, because I do. I believe you. Even if you get in lies. You don't have to worry about that. I trust you more than I would trust anyone else that would say anything against you. <laughs> Thank you. You've shown that you're willing to protect us. Protect well, all, all of us, really. You hired me, it's my duty. She like no. smiles, knowing full well she's way past the pay limit. Especially since I'm pretty sure that uh, paychecks haven't actually been big handled in game. Nope. So they only paid for like how many days to That that initial like week or so or something. Right out or whatever. <laughs> yeah. And you just kinda hung around after that. Yep. Not that we're I... complaining. It, it's 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 much more than that. 
Yes. That's fine. And just so that, you know, we're transparent and things. When if we do end up going to deal with Noro and all those other things that he's doing I want you know, you, Cad, Yong, Ark, everyone to have each other's backs when we go into that mess because Noro may do some things that very well will just stop me cold. And we'll be there to push you forward to know that you're on the right path. Because we'll help you through it. We will protect you as well. I, uh, I'm a bit of a coward, I will admit, but seeing you guys, seeing the courage that you have, the courage that Cadrell has the one that Bach is developing even. It's helping me see that people can make a difference. I used to think that you know you'll believe it several months ago when I first started traveling around and met Locke and Riven then and things I thought we may be some part of some big prophecy or something. Someday. <laughs> you should. I think you'd like her. <laughs> oh, how meta. <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna turn out this. Like the same conversation between two characters of one per layer. Okay. So I don't know what you've heard with concerns to. Noro and other such things, but since you were willing to tell me your tale, I'll give you some of mine that you may not know. Um, Noro is actually my cousin. Mm. He's a necromancer. That's obvious. You know that already. Yes. Um, he's... I don't know what his plan is exactly, but... He tends to have minions and other such things that are undead and zombies and things, and a lot of them will be furbolgs. A lot of them will be the remains of our family. And even as a cleric, I, I push to become a cleric because I wanted to stop that. I saw it as a kid when I was little, and I ran because it was terrifying. But sometimes when I see zombies, specifically zombies, it doesn't happen with skeletons, just zombies. When I see zombies, especially furball zombies, I suddenly I'm that little kid again can't do anything. So, if that happens... Think of it as this. He's not allowing them to properly rest. And that you're bringing peace to them. If you can yeah. lay them to rest. Out of do his that. control. Dealing with family is hard. And if we do end up having to, you know, kill him, there's going to be extreme grief. She, like, looks at him with, like, a knowing face of this grief. <laughs> and sometimes it can still haunt you. I you have to come to terms. Appreciate that. I I was host haunted by ghosts of Noro for years. He 
he's been my cousin's been dead a long time this who we're fighting who we're dealing with just a shell no different than the zombies he raises he was family not anymore it still hurts me and freezes me to face off against zombies and things that were my family but a furvolg that gave up himself and lost himself to this chaotic crazy whatever dahlia did to him then you would be leading him to peace i still see the ghosts of, of my dead friend each night i sleep well, thank you, Silver. Trust me, I still have to go. If it all's possible. I mean, it's... It's been nine months since the failed of revolt of my temple. At this point, I'm hoping maybe I can get the remains of my friend and actually lay him to rest as well. Because I didn't get to do that. I don't know what happened to his remains either. Alright. We'll have your back in that, okay? Like you will have ours. Thank you. Okay. So, following that fun little discussion, um... We all wake up. <laughs> we, uh, we, we, we finish with our rests, we make it to Fumok, um... Because those conversations happened in transit and other such things. Um, and, yeah. You guys make it to Fumok. Uh, stop in, speak with Gabriel, get a few donuts. Then uh, make your way down south a little bit to get to uh, Ulara's sort of forge hideout and other such things. <laughs> Be like, how do you bam, how bam, do you bam, approach bam, her non-existent door. how do you approach her non-existent door? Trumpet man. <laughs> <laughs> do it what? again. That was fun the first time, yeah. What the thaumaturgy of trumpeting of. Do 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 do. Um, we made it to uh, Ulara's again. Remember when you? Memory, I'm, having, I'm having a brain fart. Oh, um, someone you did last time. I trumpeted and I was unnaturally loud. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. This is kind of our calling card to her. Right. Okay. Yeah. I used thaumaturgy on you, didn't I? Yep. I think so. Right. Okay. Lost the silver in the roll twenty room. Yeah, I'll be back. Can you still hear me? Yeah, yeah we can, still, can still, hear still hear you. you. Okay. All right. So, following that, um, trumpet sound, brrr, and all that fun stuff. And this time... How about we download a song <laughs> Um, This time, there is no clattering or other such things. And um, eventually, uh, Ulara makes her way back up out of the forge and is like... Well, hello again. That wasn't taking. That didn't take too long. Oh right, Laura. Right, her. I forgot her for a minute. <laughs> yes, the um. Durgar. Durgar. She was making something for silver. Right now, I remember. Yay. Um. Now, the question that I How have much? for the question that I Do have I... for that Sam <laughs> is: Were you wanting? Were you wanting the item that we mentioned talking about specifically that already exists, or were you wanting something more custom? It's something that already exists. Okay. Um, because it's normally very expensive. <laughs> I know. I didn't realize that until after I requested it, and I looked up the information. Yeah. It, it, it's... So I would like to throw in a favor from... That she can call upon to use me. Well then. Um, cons considering that you are a party member that may eventually leave the party as another one comes in, 
that's totally something that can happen off screen. Um, yeah. So. So. He's like, okay. So this is not necessarily something I am super proficient in making. I would have much preferred something a little bit more uh, my wheelhouse, but that's fine. Um, this will keep you safe. And she gives you a nice fashioned amulet. Um, if you're going to do a favor or two for me in the future, that works just as well. Mm -hmm. Um, I paid. I initially paid you a uh, hundred gold for your uh, venture into the Feywild. Um, how about you give me twenty-five of that back, and then we have a favor or two. Okay. These things are expensive normally, so I'm giving you guys a great discount here. And you will have many favors to call upon me to pay until I can actually pay you the rest of it. Right. And uh, she sort of leans over to Locke, and uh, she's like, Here's a secret. I much prefer when things are custom ordered. Things that are normally, you know, mass manufactured by other spellcasters, so to speak. In other words, items that are not super rare. Um, <laughs> yeah, she, she's, she, she prefers making things that are much more uh, custom. But... Silver has in her possession the ever expensive and super powerful, if a bit generic, amulet of health. Yay! Hmm. I'm a tank. <laughs> well, more of one. Um. Mm -hmm. Now, specifically, the amulet of health will changes my constitution score to nineteen. Yep. Uh... Functionally and well, I will get a bonus of to my health of my level. Um, you will get. Um, is it on top of what happens to your health, or is it? Because it, it adjusts your con so score, which basically, I am level eight. Right. So, um, hold on. I. Do 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 do. do. I know it did something where it actually gave me an additional a bit of health. Right. Okay. So looking at it here specifically, you have to attune to it, which will be easy because you'll be traveling. Um, right. But what it will do is it, functionally speaking, all that it does is it turns your your constitution to be 19. It, it just transforms your constitution score to be 19. Boom. And if your constitution score is less than that, prior, which in your case it is, you mm -hmm. will functionally get HP that is equivalent which to... Which I will get... Since it, it went up two points, I would be getting, since I'm a level 8, 16 points of additional health. Bingo. Yep. You, your, your constitution modifier went up by two to get it to 19, when it went to 19, so you'll get two more points per level that you are of HP. Yes, and if I take it off to attune to something else, all those hit points to whatever level I am goes away. Yep. And I drop back to, down to my original. Yep. Where's my calculator? <laughs> What's your uh, HP? Let's see, 16 plus 67. I'm now at 83. Nice. Cat is still more of a tank than you, because Elephant Man. Yes, which I am totally fine with. I'm just supposed to go in there and be like, ha ha ha, smitey smitey. And right. survive being in the middle of shit <laughs> until I can kill them all. <laughs> so, I just had an idea for an enchanted item. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh. I will drop it and chat at you, Dard, and you can tell me how expensive it would be for Locke to make Laura make it. Okay. <laughs> Well, um, Holy cow, now we have someone who gives us custom magic items. Um, so, uh, hold on. Ooh. Laura would love that. Making it, you mean? Mm hmm? How expensive would that be? Um... 
I'll get back to you on that. But we'll say that she she gives you the the uh, info for it here. Um, but uh, I'm assuming Locke sort of whispers it to her. Yeah, I'm just kind of surreptitiously asking, like, as everyone else is kind of fussing with us, like, hey, how expensive would it be to do such and such? Um, the rest of the party members who uh, see this this conversation, you know, most of you are giving your privacy to Locke so that he can sort of uh, voice this out to him himself. Because all of you sort of got your items and were either custom made and you didn't know what they did, or you got a very specific thing but didn't really voice it out until you got it. Um, Locke is clearly wanting something very specific, and Ulara seems excited to make such a thing. Aww. <laughs> the thing is, is, Locke hasn't really had a good enchanted item yet. Yeah. yeah. The, closest thing he's had to that is a, is the closest thing he's had to that is a cursed crossbow. And, uh, <laughs> I mean, he, we still have it, I'm pretty sure, but I ain't it's using in that. The bag. It's yep. in the bag, but I'm really grumpy. You <laughs> bring it out. It's like, are you done being grumpy? No, I still hate you. Uh, back, back in, in the, the bag. bag. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, you have to be attuned to it to talk to it. Real did, did you guys... Wait, did you guys... um Tell or mention anything about that crossbow to Ulara? We have not mentioned a nope. to Ulara, no. Okay. Just making sure. Um... Why All would right. she be interested? How about a your, trade? Your player, <laughs> your, your your characters don't necessarily know that, but your characters would know that she is proficient in making all sorts of crazy enchanted items, and you have a cursed possessed weapon, and she's already turned a cursed weapon into a not cursed weapon. So, um, anyway, so that that's an option if you okay. guys want to play with it later, um, but. Ulara will get back to you. I'll get back to you on the gold amount for that. And in the return trip for this crazy insanity, you will most likely have that that item of yours. Nice. Because it's Yay. most definitely it's most definitely going to be done in the amount of time that it's going to take you to do all this. <laughs> right. Right. In the meantime, uh, since that'll take up uh, one of my items that I'm using for certain things. Um, I'll just take my arcane focus, you know, my little crystal orb, and take it from my sickle and put it on one of my daggers. Right. Mm, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, um, you guys see that Locke has handed off Ulara his uh, sickle that he ever seldom used, but that he had. Yeah, I, I've had it, and I, I haven't really used it because Eldritch Blast kicks ass. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. So you want it to become a dancing sickle of... Uh, mirroring your Eldritch Blasts. No. I don't know what dancing means in this context. It, it moves on its own. Itself. Oh, well, then, no. So, so you have an orbiting sickle that every time you Eldritch Blast, it does too. No, that's not what I'm <laughs> wanting. Honestly, that didn't even occur. I, I mean, infusing Eldritch Blast into the sickle did occur to me, but then I thought, you know what? No, I just, I already use Eldritch Blast, so I'm going to find something that does more damage. Yes. All right. Good to know. Okay. Well, thank you. We owe you those favors. And mm -hmm. if you have any, just, you know how to reach us, I think. Um, I don't have a direct path to talk to you, no. Um, you guys kind of uh, ended up mostly killing my cleric, so. Y your cleric? She did have a cleric among her uh, troop of people that you oh. left bleeding, that you left bleeding and bleeding and dying prior. Well, when we come to pick up whatever, oh god, maybe you might want to pick something up that we can use to communicate freely. Um, you know what? I have a better idea. Hmm. You, you killed off. And like totally destroy the uh, Goliath before, right? Yes. You didn't happen to find his sending stone, did you? Sending which, stone? Which Oak did. Oh. Remember? It was a stone that was going a direct conversation link to Noro. Yeah. And was a means for 
Noro to realize that something was up with his wonderful hunter that was totally dead. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Is Oak with us? Oak's got it. Currently. Is he going to speak up about it? <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Uh, we did find that, actually. Alright. Well, there you go. If you guys deal with Noro and he's defeated, he's not going to need his other end of the Sending Stone, now is he? No, he's not. But what if he doesn't have it on him? <laughs> he always carries that thing around. But we killed his pet thing. He has, he's... I... Unfortunately, I know him. Even though it serves him no purpose, he's still going to be carrying it around. And if, if, if not, it'll be in his lab, which perhaps you guys will fight him in his lab. I would be very careful if you do that, but if you did, that's Where something to search lab? for. Well, he... Dahlia gave him some ability to, like, transplant his lab to different places without changing it. I don't know what's up with that. Oh. Like, so, it's like some sort of in you in dimension planar shift thing. I don't know. It's weird. Um, so okay. he he's constantly moving it around. But as far as what it's what it's functionally looks like, it's mostly the same because he's got to have something in his mind that's some sort of order. And his room, it's his room, his lab. Everything else is chaotic and crazy, but he's organized. Um. Yeah, okay. Well, we need to be held off for burning daylight. Right. Also, um, you're going to be going to deal with shrines and other crazy things. Yes. I will give you a warning. Watch out! You're just to give you some degree of heads up, as vague as it is. Because it's been three months. Well, I mean, you're going to be dealing with the shrines. You're going to be dealing with the people that are over those shrines like I was over this one. They're not as nice okay. as me. Oh. One of them is way too flirty and has way too much fun. <laughs> while, the other, while the other is um, more messed Silver's up. Silver's going to look at Locke. A more messed up scientist than I am. Oh, okay. See, I build things. I don't augment myself. Eh. No. Uh. Anyway. Um and and, and, and watch out for uh, wayward snakes and dogs and you're good. Anyway, see y'all later. She goes back down into her uh, Yay. thing. Alrighty, shall we? Mm-hmm. Hmm. And, um, was, uh, how long? About four days. How lender? To damper. Damapore, or whatever. It's mostly French. Kenneth, French, go. I'm up here. Come yeah, up. <laughs> okay, to there. <laughs> to a ta to a village that's trying to be fancy, but it's not fancy at all. No, it's a no, it's not. Um. Yep. So, you guys will make your way to uh the town uh close to the town of Demophor. Um. Is about right here, you're getting to about the bridge and other such things. Um, and here, on this side of the river, um, I'm going to give you this and then we'll end it because this will be potential things that you could look into. Um, one thing looks immediately like creepy and weird and the other one looks almost entertaining and fun it's kinda hard to decide which one you want to think that is depending on your personality 
Um, as you've gotten closer, this mountainside is literally covered in an ever-present fog. Okay. You never really noticed it when you were traveling to Rydale before, or it might be something new. You're not entirely sure. But this there must be a lot of ogres hiding in those mountains. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're, we're talking about like the army of a thousand ogres right here. <laughs> and um, you're you're coming to the night as you've made it to this bridge and you sort of set up camp. Um, and off to the edge near this uh, river, uh, river and pond here. Um, you guys are fairly close enough to it for once. Um, you see a big top, a literal circus. Oh. Huh. That has set up itself off to the uh, north a little bit near the river, or pond rather. I vote we keep going from both. Yeah. Um, but we will see where that goes, if anywhere. And, um... Yeah, I will end it here. It was a great, mm, sort of, sort of chill, laid back, sort of backstory e session. I enjoyed it, along with drunk silver, which is best. <laughs> yes, drunk silver is is an amazing silver. I'll give her that. Yeah, I forgot to ask about the scars. <laughs> what? See, Oak was being careful. He went to get her backstory in a much more uh, simplistic way. And didn't want to bring up the scars. But... I mean, Oak we had in... a couple of days of travel. I know, there's that too. But Oak is insightful. And he knows not to pry in specifically of secrets. He can sort of get an inference of, you know, orphaned... Like she was visit, uh, fidgeting while she was tell telling the story. Of Orphan, like... Orphaned... Vigorously trained group of people that weren't necessarily all righteous at, by the end of it. Yeah, he he can kind of get some ideas on where those scars might have come from. He wasn't going to just outright be like, Hey, Silver, we saw your scars. What were your scars? No. She would have been like, Oh, yeah, I spent some time in a prison. <laughs> yeah, no, he's not going to go directly for that. No. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, we don't remember the last time he overstepped his bounds and asking about a backstory. We exactly. lost a party member. <laughs> exactly. So he was a little bit more tactful this time, and careful. This more this time. Friendly. <laughs> yeah, we lost a party member last time, and we still give him shit about that. Him and Yong both. That's fine. Yep. I, and Silver got to I learn things about Riven, it that she didn't I know. Think, Hooray! I think, yeah. I think Riven would beg to differ that it's fine, but okay. <laughs> And when she comes back, we'll see. I mean, it was a it was an amazing session when we had it. I yes. had a blast at that one so much. Definitely got to explore, but it like the characters themselves are really stressed by that whole mess. Yeah, and rightly so. It's just I'm biting at the bit to tell you the significance of her scars. <laughs> <laughs> we might get into that later. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. Uh... We are ending it here, then. Um, okay. I've... <sighs> we will do... This has been... Sh the This has been how be... Brian. And then the next time will be Sam. Okay. This has been Shadows of Gradiriel. Tune in next time to see whether or not we're going to go to a foggy area or a creepy circus. Or if we just keep going, cause fuck both of those noises. Yes. <laughs> Which Silver is already voting for. <laughs>